Good evening. My name is Councillor Amrit Mann and I'm the chair of the planning committee. It's just a touch over five, five o'clock, so I would like to welcome all of you to this virtual meeting of Hounslow's planning committee. I would like to welcome the members of this committee who are sitting this evening, as well as council officers who will be assisting members throughout the meeting. In addition, I would like to welcome members of the public who are watching this meeting at home. The way this meeting will work will be that as chair, I will be running the meeting and inviting people to speak. As it is very easy to speak over each other in meetings like this, I will ask each member or officer to speak in turn at the appropriate stage. This will mean that there should normally be no need for people to interrupt or to ask to speak. However, I shall make sure that members have ample opportunity to ask questions and make their comments on the report and applications before them. The exception to this arrangement will be the legal committee or planning officers who may turn on their microphones to alert me to any legal governance or planning issue that needs addressing, although I would expect this to be a rare occurrence. In addition, we have a producer of the meeting from our ICT department who will also contact me if necessary, but I think it's unlikely if all goes well, and we hope that it all will. The etiquette for members of the committee and for officers who are expecting to speak will be to turn your microphones until you're asked to turn off your microphones until you're asked to speak. This means that only one person will be speaking at a time and there will be no background noise, making it easier for all of us to follow the meeting and also for those watching at home. I will also ask members to say who they are when they make a contribution and to speak slowly and clearly for the same reason. We have five members of the planning committee with us here this evening and it is we who will be making the decisions. Officers of the council will provide assistance and advice as required, but the final decision will be made by the members. So now I'd like to introduce each of my members here tonight one by one. I will start. My name is Councillor Amrit Mann and I'm the chair of this committee. I'm also the ward councillor for Heston East. Can I now invite Councillor Richard Foote to introduce himself? Hi, I'm Councillor Richard Foote. I'm representative of the Hamworth Ward in the London Borough of Hounslow and I'm vice chair of the planning committee. Thank you, Richard. Councillor Mel Collins, please introduce yourself. Yeah, Councillor Melvin Collins and I am representing Brentford Ward on the Council. Thank you, Mel. Councillor Bishnu Grung to introduce yourself. Bishnu, if you unmute yourself. Thank you. Everything is can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Hi, good evening. The, um, I'm Councillor Bishnu Grong. Uh, I'm from Hanoth Park Ward uh, Councillor and I'm the member of the Planning Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Bishnu. And Councillor Michael Dennis, who is last on my list, but uh, should really be in, um, in alphabetical order. But Councillor Dennis, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, and my name is Councillor Michael Dennis. I am representative of Chiswick Riverside Board in the borough of Hounslow. And um, yes, on, I, and I, I sit on this committee. Thank you, Councillor. Um, can I now invite um, officers, uh, starting with uh, Robert Coomber. Robert. Thank you, Chair. My name is Robert Coomber. I'm the Central Area Planning Manager. I'm the Senior Planning Officer responsible for the conduct of the planners on this committee and will be presenting one case. Thank you, Robert. Uh, can I now ask Kieran Cochlan, please? Thank you, Chair. Good evening. My name is Kieran Cochlan and I'm a Transport Planner with the Council. Thank you, Kieran. Can I now invite Patrick Kelly to introduce himself? Good evening, Chair. Uh, my name is Patrick Kelly and I'm the legal advisor for this evening's meeting. Thank you, Patrick. Can I now invite Wendy Merry to introduce herself? Good evening, I'm Wendy Merry and I'm from Democratic Services. Thank you, Wendy. 
can I now invite Chaspal Sandhu to inv uh, introduce herself? Good evening, I'm Chaspal Sandhu and I'm here from Democratic Services. Thank you, Chaspal. Uh, we also have officers acting a producing role for the technical side of this meeting, but as they're not expected to be involved in the discussion of this meeting, I will thank them for their help, but not ask them to introduce themselves. So, um, moving on, a few little house rules. Members of the public are reminded that the agenda and all the reports being considered by this committee tonight can be found on the council website under the planning committee meetings page. So if you want to see them, that is where to look. I also want to make sure that members have seen all the agenda and have had all the reports. Um, I'm aware that uh, the uh, item six, there was a report to follow that members have had those barring Councillor Mel Collins, uh, but we're going to go through that uh, in, in uh, when we reach item six. So anybody who's not had any, any of the reports, please speak now, or I would expect that, that that's agreed that everybody's had the paperwork. Okay, so I would like to remind members of the need to hear all the evidence in each report we are considering tonight. This is a legal requirement and I will be asking you to confirm you have heard the whole debate before you vote on any matters this evening. If you should find you're having technical problems and need to log out of the meeting and come back in again, please let me know immediately, ideally beforehand, but if not afterwards by turning on your microphone. This would be a permitted interruption. We can then decide how far we need to recap if that is necessary or if the member needs not to vote on that particular item. Finally, I would say to any member of the public listening or watching, thank you for your for joining us this evening. We hope that this meeting will go well, but any virtual meetings may suffer from unexpected technical hitches. So please bear with us and we'll try to be up and running as soon as possible. I should also clarify that this meeting is being recorded and it will be made available on the Council's YouTube channel in the next few days. Contributors to the meeting are asked to remember that they will therefore be included in the recording of this public meeting. Thank you. We will now move on to the first item on the agenda. So which is apologies for absence. Um, we've had apologies from Samia Chowdhury. <coughs> we, she's not well, so we wish her well. Um, no further apologies. So let's move on to item two which is declaration of interest under the town and country planning code of guidance or any other communications from members where they want to de declare any interest. So let me run down my list. We'll start with Council Richard Foote. If you've got anything to declare, Richard. I've had the normal uh, batch of emails coming through, Chair, but um, as you know, I reserve my situation till I've heard both sides of the argument. OK, Richard. Um, Councillor Mel Collins. Mel? Yeah. Oh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, like Councillor Foote, I've, I've only actually received emails on the Gunnersbury Park Bowls, uh, but I would also like for the purposes of transparency to record that I actually wrote to the planning officer and yourself for for a direction and guidance on, on that particular issue. Um, uh, item of the agenda. Um, thank you, Mel. That's noted. Yeah. Um, can I now ask Councillor uh, Bishnu Gurung if he's got any declaration of any interest? OK, um, thank you, Chair. Yes, yeah, I do have the uh, uh, on the item number three. I have got the email a uh, bunch of email that's uh, about six, seven email uh, regarding to this matter. Okay. okay. Thank you, Bishnu. Uh, Councillor Michael Dennis. Uh, thank you, Chair. I um, Yes, I too uh, received uh, some correspondence from uh, uh, from residents uh, about the, the Bowles Club and Pavilion Park, uh, Gunnersbury Park, but I would also like to add in, for the sake of transparency that I did invite, I did accept an invitation from a representative of the Bowls Club to visit the site uh, at a time where COVID rules are allowed and uh, that, that lasted an hour, but just to get an idea of what it was, what it looked like on the ground. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor Dennis. Uh, and myself, uh, I've had numerous emails and, and I think uh, all the members for record keeping uh, the declaration of interest is that we've all had some form of communication along with myself. Um, okay, so no further uh, interest to declare. Let me move on to the main uh, agenda items. So, we now move on to the planning applications for decision this evening. Uh, where we need to have time contributions, I will ask the legal officer to alert me to when allocated timings have been reached. I will also ask him to alert me to prior to the guillotine being reached if we have not had uh, or if you not concluded the meeting by that particular time. So the time given to speakers is five minutes. Um, so uh, closer to the time uh, we will be notifying the speaker that they have uh, uh, I think a minute left. Uh, may I remind all members, officers and public speakers at this meeting to introduce themselves each time they speak and also to turn off their microphones when they finish speaking. It is also important to speak slowly and clearly so that everybody can understand what you're saying. Finally, if you're making reference to any agenda item documentation, please give them page and paragraph details. Okay, how are we going to deal with uh, people speaking? The officer will present the report and members will be able to ask questions. Um, then I will ask the speaker to speak. In, in, in this case, there is only the one speaker. Uh, and after we've heard the speaker, uh, we will then move on to um, to discussion and debate and possibly ask a, a summary uh, from from the officer presenting the report. So with that said, let me move on uh, to inviting Robert Coomba to to speak and then I will ask uh, Guy Lambert uh, uh, as to the reason why he called in uh, item three. Um, Robert, do you want to kick off? Yes, very briefly, Chair, this is a proposed extension to the Bowls Club and conversion into um, the conversion of the building um, in part into a restaurant and cafe. The details on this case will be presented by the case officer Leo Hall. Um, and I think that we should uh, defer now to Councillor Lambert for his reason for calling and then we can ask Leo Hall to give you details of the scheme as necessary. OK. Guy. Hello, Councillor Guy Lambert. Right. Yes, yes. Th th thank you, Chair. You've got five minutes. Thanks. Well, not, not, I don't need five minutes. Um, my understanding was that there would be speakers for and against. But uh, that, that may not be the case. I don't know. Um, you're you the only only speaker. There is no for or against speakers. That's why we've had to change some of the script here. But uh, um, you're the only speaker. So let's you start as to why this was called in by yourself. OK, um, well, I, I, I initiated a call in because I, I actually wanted all sides of the argument to be publicly aired. Um, which uh, which doesn't seem to be uh, too likely because I, I, I'm not I'm not familiar with them. However, th there is a strong argument for um, retaining the Bowls Clubhouse, which has been aired extensively on social media and in uh, 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 letters to all of us. Uh, sorry, I should have introduced myself. My, my name is Guy Lambert. I'm a, 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 a ward member for Brentford Ward uh, in where where Gunners Park resides. I, I am normally a plan, member of the planning committee, but I'm not on the committee tonight. Um, I, I, so I'm just here as a, as a ward councillor. So there is a strong argument for retaining the Bowles Clubhouse. Um, we, we've heard a lot about it and, and th th there's been a lot about this in public. Um, and I, I, I expected that uh, that would be expounded tonight, but that's not going to be the case. There, there is an opposing argument, not so widely understood, in favour of providing a golf the golf facility in, instead, um, no doubt this argument. Well, I said no. That no, I thought this argument would also be put forward as well. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll just give 
a very brief um, overview of, uh, of, of the reason why that might be a good idea. Um, the, the golf facility would attract, uh, they, they say, about 30,000 visitors to the park, and uh, that's uh, that's clearly in line with some of the um, uh, 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 of the objectives of, of the park management. In addition, it would provide a, a significant sum of um, of money uh, to go towards the park's upkeep at a time when the park is very, very short of income and relies uh, very heavily on two cash strapped councils in the shape of Hanver and Ealing, um, who are the ultimate owners. Um, and of course, there is a pure planning question about whether the application is conformant uh, about which the planning officers have reached a conclusion, which is obviously set out in the papers. Um, what would be a very bad outcome, and uh, another reason why I didn't want that I, I wanted this to be called in and, and thought through, um, a, a very bad outcome for the park and local residents would be a refusal of the application to lead to the facility lying dormant for 18 months. And I think that's a, that's that's a serious worry. Um, whilst it is advertised for a community use in line with uh, what CSC, the CIC, sorry, the, the CIC is the community interest company which uh, runs the park on behalf of the two councils. Um, so, so, so uh, the, 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 they would be at liberty to leave it fallow for 18 months, but they'd have to advertise it for community use during that period. Um, uh, so, so it was a, with a view to avoiding this, I wanted it to be aired in public. The decision, of course, is ultimately in the hands of the committee, um, and uh, so I, I, I leave it to. I commend it to you. I'm finished. Okay, thank you, Guy. Okay, um, normally when when we have a call in, uh, people just state the reasons why they called it in. Um, you've rolled the ball a bit further on, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it to my committee members whether they've got any further questions to clarify any of the points that you've raised, right? Um, so, uh, Councillor Richard Foote, any questions to Councillor Lambert on on his, um, his call in? Um, yeah, sort of. Um, I mean, I, I, I have to question this 30,000 persons per annum to go to a pitch and putt, putt uh, uh, area, which is what is going to replace the bowls pitch, I understand. Um, you know, I, I've played golf, I don't play anymore, but I played golf which did have the old Hounslow golf course had a pitch and putt, putt um, area to it. You were lucky if you saw, you know, half a dozen people in a day on there. Uh, same with four world golf course, exactly the same kitchen patch but not really used you know what I see on the map here is that there is according to this anyway the map of Gunnersbury a miniature golf course um, now if I mean does that exist or doesn't it I mean it's there it's on the map um, showing but if if I, I'm puzzled because is the plan uh, or the, the planning application to change the format for the building, or is it to um, change the layout of the bowling green to enable pitch and pit, pitch and putt? Um, I'm, I'm confused. I thought at first it was just for the building, um, but there's so much seemingly going on here that uh, you know, I'm, I'm very suspicious of it because uh, of you know the fact that it's not being quoted. Why has the why has the rug been pulled out from underneath? Uh, the bowls uh, team uh, or bowls club um, in such a way. No explanation of that uh, as to why or, or when. There doesn't seem to be a really good sound economic uh, expectation of what is there. What does the what does the golf what does the the bowls club uh, bring in? And what would really a realistic view of what a pitching pitch and putt would put in there. My own view, if this miniature golf club uh, course is there, is is it just, you know, and, and you know, if they're looking for having a, a cafe type thing instead of just the 
the room for bowls, um, then is there not some way in which that can be extended to, to cover both? Uh, do we have to have one or the other? Or is it possible in this tiny patch of green here called Gunnersbury Park that we can't have both in there and satisfy uh, all areas? I've never played bowls in my life, but I know a lot of people who do and, and, and find great satisfaction. And certainly amongst the elderly, who I'm not one yet, I'm, I'm claiming, um, <laughs> every day. But um, you know, the, 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 it's a very popular sport because it's the sort of sport that they can play without collapsing into a heart attack um, on there. So it, it's something that if we can retain it, we should. OK, Richard, uh, uh, sorry. The uh, yeah. on planning, what we're actually let, talking about planning is here, that I don't know what the real issue is, and I'm rather suspect. Okay. suspecting that there is another issue under there somewhere. Yeah. Richard, um, just on the questioning, because um, because it's quite, sorry guy, it's, it's quite a lot for uh, for there in terms of answering. Um, some of it you might be able to, but um, I think you, since you're not the applicant and you're not the objector, I don't expect you to know the ins and outs of all of what uh, is being asked by Councillor Richard Foote. Um, and you could actually leave that till uh, Robert does the more in-depth discussion and Robert can pick those points up. But if you want to have a go, that's fine. Otherwise, you know, um, I'll, I'll just move on to the next next uh, councillor. Yeah, Guy? I'm happy whichever way you want to take it. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah, oh. I'm comfortable with that. OK, Guy? Oh, I can certainly answer a lot of that. Um, it's not a pitch and putt um, as you and I understand it. And I used to do pitch and putt back in the day in um, in the Bunny Park in Hanwell and other places. This is, this is a different, this is a much more commercial sort of arrangement. And um, that, that, that they have, that there's one in Acton Park, there's one in Battersea Park, and there's a couple of others around London. Um, I, I, I believe, I have not been there, but uh, I believe that, that, that they thrive. Um, they're quite expensive um, and, quite, and they have a lot of people going to them. And the attraction for the CIC, the attraction for the park management is that um, this facility would create, they, they, they believe, um, a, you know, a, 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 a sizable sum of income. I think they talked about. I can't remember. I can't remember the numbers, but it's tens of thousands of pounds a year. Um, so, 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 so that's what's driving them, together with the, the desire for numbers. Um, the the, the Bowls Club uh, has been in there for you know for many many years. Um, the, the, the membership, as I understand it, and that some of this. I, I have to be very careful because some of the facts are disputed. Um, the CIC tell me that the, the Bowls Club had a membership of 20, um, of which 12 are active players, um, and that that was dwindling. Um, the, 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 uh, the, the data that I've seen more recently is that, um, that, that they've done a modest, that, that, and also the CIC say, They've been encouraging the Bowls Club to try and attract more members for some time, and they failed. Um, the Bowls Club, as I understand it, have signed up 40 new members in the last few months, whilst this planning um, hiatus has been going on. Um, and certainly they've written to me saying they expect they could get as many as 60. Um, so uh, uh, the, 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 the question of I think that the, the 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 planning issue is not about the use of the bowling green per se, because whether it's bowling or golf, that is the same planning class as I understand it. Although, of course, I'm far from the expert here compared with Robert and Leo. Um, the issue is about the the, the 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 clubhouse, which is currently, as I understand it, purely a clubhouse. Um, and the proposal is that that will be turned into uh, a sort of office and, and cafe restaurant, um, and, uh, which is, whilst it's still technically a community use, um, is, is a different kind of community use than, than, than the Bowls Club. Um, and, and now my understanding is, and this is where my expertise definitely runs out, uh, my understanding is 
the only place where you can put the golf course is on this bowling green. Um, but but in any case, the, the that that's really not a planning issue. The planning issue is the use of the clubhouse. So, so I hope that helps. That's uh, that, that's my understanding of it. Okay. OK, Guy, um, let, let me move on to Councillor Mel Collins. Mel, any any sort of questions to Guy? Uh, no, uh, it's a short answer. I want to keep my powder dry for the meeting. OK, good, good. Well, well played there, Mel. OK, uh, going on to Councillor Bishnu Gurung. Bishnu? Hi, I'm Councillor Bishnu Gurung from um, representing Hamlet Park Wards, a planning committee member. Um, I've got just a quick uh, clarification question for the councillor Guy Lambert. Uh, he brought in the calling the this um, uh, planning uh, permission in the, in the committee, uh, but it is not coming out clear why he's calling in. So uh, could you please clarify either you are against the bowling club or for? Thank you. I don't think that's. Question. Uh, 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 thank you, Bishnu. I, I, I am aggressively neutral on, on, on the matter. But what, but what I didn't want, I mean, what, what, what I felt was um, that, 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 that there's, uh, my, my real concern is that this will go into the, the bowling club's lease was terminated some time ago. Um, and my, my information at the time was the bowling club had been wound up. Apparently that is not the case, but it was a bowling club member who told me it had been wound up. Apparently that's not the case, it's still going. Um, so so, so my, my concern was that uh, the, 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 the planning, if, if they advertise it as a community facility in an estate agent for 18 months, um, then that would satisfy, as I understand, it would satisfy the planners uh, if they did not then find a, an alternative pure community use for it. And my concern was because of see, because the, the 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 management of the park are desperate for money, that uh, and the the bowling club provides little or no uh, income for them, that they, they would actually say, well, okay, we'll we'll do that. We'll keep it we'll, we'll keep it empty for eighteen months. Uh, and that wouldn't be any, in anybody's interests. So, so I was. Uh, what I hoped would happen was that we'd have both sides giving their story, but that that's not what's happening. So, mm -hmm. so, I, so, so I try. So I'm trying to give both sides of the story to the best of my ability. But as I say, I'm, like, I'm neutral about it. Um, I, I, I don't have a particular view about it. Okay, guy. Thank you. Um, let me move on to Councillor Michael Dennis. Well, thank you, Chair. Uh, no, I, I, I think I'll follow uh, Councillor Collins to keep, keep my powder dry until the, the discussion on this. Thank you. OK, and myself, I've got no questions for you guys. Thank you very much Yeah, for your, for your uh, uh, presentation. Uh, let me now go back to Robert Coomba, right? Robert, so let's have an in-depth uh, presentation and then questions from the members yeah okay thank you uh, thank you chair I'm going to ask Leo to give the in-depth explanation but there are two key issues that you are needing to look at here the first is does the built development itself have an adverse or unacceptable effect on the metropolitan open land that constitutes Gunnersbury Park and the second issue is does the proposal uh, remove uh, without good justification the community facility that the bowls club is at the moment and there are clear policy criteria for that which is set out in the report and i will now hand over to leo to explain okay do you off you go um good evening everyone uh, chair members everyone reviewing remotely um my name is leo Hall. i'm planning officer in the east area um and i'm just going to um hopefully share this presentation that i have um <clears throat> Hoping everyone can see the presentation coming up there. Oh. Can I confirm that's visible to everyone? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so as uh, as many of you will know, um, uh, Gunsbury Park, it's um, uh, 76 hectare expansive grade two listed parkland um, located within Brentwood Ward. Um, it's jointly owned by London Boroughs of Hounslow and Ealing. Um, and the site sits within the Gunsbury Park, Park Conservation Area and contains a number of listed buildings throughout the, uh, the parkland. Um, it's also designated as Metropolitan Open Land um, as a nature conservation area um, and is on the Register of Historic Parks and Gardens. Um, so the app this application speci relates specifically to the bowling club, as we know uh, from the introduction, um, which is to the southwest of the mansion um, with the, this uh, black dotted line that you'll see on the on the map here on the aerial view. Um, and the site contains a square bowling green at the, at the moment um, and a clubhouse pavilion, uh, which um, uh, and, and it lies directly to the north of the recently completed sports hub, which is just here on the map um, to the uh, to, to the west of the, the nursery grounds, um, which I think are being redeveloped at the moment. Um, and to the west of this the site, there's uh, playing fields for you know serving the eastern portion of, uh, of Gunsbury Park. Um, so just in terms of a bit of context, as you can see, this is the existing um, site layout of, of, the, of, the, of the site. Um, so you can see the pavilion here, um, the bowling green and the access uh, up, up to the northern um, edge. Um, and that runs right into the car park, which is the main car park for Gunnersbury Park. Um, so I think that's uh, sort of part of the justification for this, uh, you know, the siting of this, um, of the, the proposal here. Um, a bit more context here, um, you can see a, a slightly outdated uh, 3D image there um, showing the uh, the bowling green as it is, as it is. Um, that's before the sports hub has gone in um, to the right hand side. Um, so yeah, that's uh, just a little bit more context there and some photographs for your information as well. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been on, on site during the during the pandemic, but um, these are some photographs provided by the applicant um, showing the existing pavilion, um, which is in a, a moderate state of repair um and the the bowling green um itself um so the application here um seeks permission for the permanent conversion of the building from a clubhouse uh, which serves the adjacent bowling green to a cafe restaurant use um within uh, with changes to the internal um, and external layout um and the erection of a part single story rear extension uh, a part rear infill extension and a new entrance gate to the site as well so as you can see from these existing versus proposed plans, um, the existing WC block uh, toilets block outside would be demolished um, along with this uh, metal storage shed, which is there at the moment. Um, this extension to the, to the back of uh, on the left hand side would, would come out um, by four metres um, and there would be another storeroom as well um, attaching to, to what's going to be a, a kitchen to the, to the, the new restaurant, cafe, um, golf storage uh, facility that they're proposing. Um, so um, that's the nature of the proposal and um, there would obviously be external changes as well to the to the, bowl, uh, the bowling pavilion um, to to allow for this uh, this new use um, and uh, these can be shown in the in the elevations here where you can compare and contrast um, so um, in terms of the entrance as well um, this the, the uh, be no changes as far as the application shows uh, to the boundary treatment apart from the erection of a new um, entrance gate here and a uh, pathway up to the up to the pavilion um, and um, the existing bowls green would also be converted to a mini golf course however as um, Councillor Lambert has explained um, this alteration has not been included within the de development description um, because the proposed use uh, as a golf course, a mini golf course is interchangeable with the existing use as a bowling green. So in planning terms, there can be no objection to that part of the scheme. Um, flood lighting columns, which were originally proposed on this plan, um, have now been removed from the proposal. So that's, um, you know, in the interests of historical character and ecology of the park. Um, so obviously that's a, that's a positive change that, that the applicants made. Um, but uh, yes, um, so um, over the course of the assessment period, officers have concluded that the design of the proposal um, uh, in terms of the extensions and alterations to the site would be modest in scale and would not appear in Congress with their setting. Um, officers have also determined that since the proposed works would serve as a facility which complements an existing outdoor sports use um, of the land uh, and the visual impact would be 
uh, fairly neg negligible. Um, the application would meet the exception tests B and C of the uh, paragraph 145 of the National Planning Policy Framework, which relates to um, inappropriate development on green belts or metropolitan open land. In this case, the site is on metropolitan open land. Um, uh, however, we uh, the council considers that the application is it does not represent an um, inappropriate development and would not constitute a de departure from the development plan in this particular regard. So the only issue at stake here, therefore, is the loss of the community use, um, i.e. being the, the clubhouse building, um, as we've established the, the, the bowling green itself the, and the change to the golf course is not a material consideration. Um, and the conversion of the community building to a non-community use. Um, Local plan policy CI1 um, basically seeks to protect existing community facilities in the borough and it states that where a community um, use is being lost and not being reprovided elsewhere um, at an equivalent capacity, a proposal will be expected to demonstrate that the facility has been vacant or significantly underused for a continuous period of 18 months and is not appropriate for any other community uses as demonstrated by the applicant through evidence of sufficient marketing. Um, it, the, the onus is also on the applicant to demonstrate that the facility is no longer required by the body that operates it and that robust evidence has, has been submitted to show that the use is no longer required to um, serve its catchment area. Whilst, so as you can see from this slide, the community benefits package, um, whilst the existing bowls club is acknowledged um, to you know have experienced a decline in membership in in the in the uh, last few years, um, and the applicant has set set out a, a series of community benefits to try to justify the loss of the community uh, local community use. Um, in the absence of eighteen months active marketing evidence of the site to identify alternative community uses, uh, the council is unable to support the change of use of the building at this stage, as we don't consider that there's sufficient evidence to demonstrate that an alternative community use would not be viable at this site. Furthermore, the proposed community benefits are not considered to outweigh the harm identified, which would arise from the loss of this extant uh, community use. It should be noted that um, during the consultation process, approximately 65 to 70 objections were received, um, some of which were related to the loss of this community use, um, uh, in addition to another uh, a number of other important factors, which um, many of which are, are not planning considerations, but are, are worth bearing in mind for, for members of the committee. Um, and these are available for view in the, in the uh, published report. Um, just for a bit of clarity, um, in terms of marketing evidence, uh, the 18 months marketing evidence that we would normally expect, this refers to active marketing by an estate agent or other means of publicity, where at the end of an 18 month period, um, we would expect to see letters submitted from an agent uh, to demonstrate that the community use has been marketed continuously, but to no avail and to, with no uptake uh, from other pros prospective community uses or occupiers. So, in summary, the application uh, is considered to be un unacceptable in principle um, and contrary to local plan policy CI1 um, to do with community uses and that is uh, contrary to the general intent of the development plan um, and it is therefore recommended for refusal. Um, thank you and I'm now happy to invite questions. If, uh, OK, wishes. thank you, Leo. Thank you, Leo. Mm -hmm. Let me. Oh, there's some background noise. Um, let me ask my members for questions to Leo. Can, can it just be questions to Leo? We'll have a debate and a discussion afterwards, uh, but just questions. So starting with Councillor Richard Foote first. Richard, any questions to Leo? Just check. Um, can I ask, is the planning application, if that was to go forward, as it's shown here, would that impinge upon what is currently the bowling green and therefore mean that the bowling green could no longer exist because there's part of a building across it. Uh, um, so so uh, it, the, the, the extensions to the bowling to the bowls clubhouse are, are very minor, so they would not um, interfere with the um, uh, the playing of, of bowls um, and uh, it's, it's not considered that that um, this although this is a matter for the applicant um, that there will be sufficient space on the site uh, itself to, to accommodate both uses. Um, I'm not sure if I've uh, misunderstood the question there. Um. Richard? I was, <coughs> if we approved the, if we approved the planning application for the building, if it meant that the bowling, that 
by virtue of the building now being on the bowling green or a part thereof would mean that that element of it would go out the window. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you're saying no, that the building does not come in that direction and encroach on the on what is currently the bowling green. Yes, I suppose um, if, if we were to this, I, I suppose that's not really a planning consideration because, you know, if we were to approve the building, um, it would then be up to the applicant whether they wanted to go ahead with, uh, ch you know, changing the use of the of, of the of the bowling green. Um, but obviously it, it, it would strike me that um, the two uses were probably not, you know, the cafe use and the bowling green, would, it would not be in the interest of the applicant, which is, you know, to, to obviously convert the, the bowls green. Um, yeah, I, under, I understand what you're saying, but I'm, I'm not quite sure with it, about it not being in planning because if, if we approve a planning application, which then takes away a community facility, uh, then I would think that's very much a planning matter. That's why I asked the question. No, of course, the removal, as, as, as the uh, presentation explained, um, the, the removal of um, the, the community uses is, is, is the principal issue here. Um, and that's why we would expect to see that community use, if it's no longer needed for, for the current user group, we would expect it to be actively marketed to other user groups uh, for that continuous period of 18 months um, before we can be satisfied that, um, you know, there wouldn't, there isn't a need for that community use in the park at the moment. Um, does that answer your does that answer your question? Misunderstanding. <laughs> Richard? Yeah, that... yeah, all sort of, yeah. <laughs> all right, okay. Well, look, what's it called? We 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 can pick this up in the discussion element, yes, right? Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Councillor Mel Collins. Mel, you still on the line? I'm still alive and kicking. Yes. Okay. Um, questions to Leo? Uh, no, I have no questions of Leo. Thank you. OK, let me then move on to Councillor Bishnu Grung. Sorry, I left the microphone on. I am Councillor Bishnu Grung from Anand Park Ward uh, representing. Um, you know, just a clarity one. So this planning application is just for the communal, the building, but uh, you are not touching anything else on the bowling green, yes? Yeah, the application um, itself relates to the to the to the building. However, um, the bowling green could be converted to a, a pitch and putt and would be under the uh, if, if we were to approve the if the if members were to approve the um, the change of use of the building, um, the applicant would then change the uh, the bowling green to a pitch and putt use. So that would be that's an associated change. However, it's not part of the development description here because it the, it's it's a change from one sporting use to another. So in planning terms, that's not um, a material thing that we need to assess, basically, if that makes sense, Councillor Gurren. Um, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just concerned about the bowling green. That's all the, other than that's fine. Thank you. OK, Bishnu, uh, now moving on to Councillor Michael Dennis. Michael, questions uh, to Leah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Leah, for an excellent presentation. Really clear, really like that. Um, I just have one question, um, Councillor. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, oh, I'm so I'm I'm so sorry. The the councillor who gave uh, uh, Guy Lambert. I do apologise. Councillor Guy Lambert did make a reference to the financial potential financial gain for London Borough of Hounslow if, for example, the application did go ahead and it was, say, commercially successful. Um, would you be able to answer this question? But how would Hounslow a direct, a benefit? financially from this? I suppose um, that's probably more of a question for the um, uh, for discussion afterwards. Um, sure, less sure. Of a, less of a planning, planning matter and more for yeah discussion afterwards. Sure, okay. okay. Thank you, thank you. That, that was all, thank you. Okay, uh, I have no questions to Leo, but you, Leo, hang in there. And uh, we'll move on to now, really, the discussion element or uh, debate element. So um, I'm going to go back to Richard. Richard, any any further thoughts, discussions on it? Chair, before that, could yep. I just interject? Um, members should be aware that um, in terms of making a planning decision, the financial benefits to the council um, as a commercial arm are not something that we can take into account in planning decisions. 
Okay, that, that's that's very helpful, uh, Robert. Um, so, I mean, uh, in terms of the decision making, we're not to consider the financial element because it's outside of the remit of this committee. So if we just stick to the planning in front of us and any debate and issues around that, right? If, if you want further clarification, there's uh, Leo and Richard on, uh, uh, Robert on hand to, to discuss it, yeah? Okay, so Councillor Richard Foote. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, my, my problem is that, yes, there is the planning application is to convert the pavilion into a, um, in, in, into a cafe, so on. And then, but then uh, we've got a financial justification that's been pushed in, I think oh, probably by Guy, that talks about 30,000, which is highly debatable whether a pitch and patch putt course would would get that kind of money. I don't see it. I, you know, as I said before, lucky if you get six people on a pitch and patch. If it's the one like on Hounslow, golf course where you've got a ray of you know two stories of golfers playing out across the pitch that's different but that is a significant change to this it cost you a lot more money than this as well so you know it's it's really puzzling me because what i don't want to do is inadvertently by virtue of passing a planning application i've got nothing against the the redevelopment of the of the hut into something a bit more sophisticated because quite frankly it would serve the purposes to um, to a bowling green just as much as it would to a pitch and putt um you know there's nothing that says that you can't have a, a better um facility to for bowling than you currently got so it, it's all a bit puzzling as to is, is is somebody trying to work the oracle here and this is what worries me is that it seems to be you know, something going on. I'm really, you know, the fact that CIC has not bothered to come and talk to us uh, worries me. Um, you know, uh, what is exactly their position? What is what they're aiming to do? Um, you know, now at the moment we have a, a here that says that if it hasn't uh, been uh, gone through um, and shown that it was available um, on the market, and, and it's not reached that 18 months of showing that this that they've not proved that um then that's our current position and, and that's really you know if we follow the officer's advice then we we vote in, in to remain with that situation that nothing happens but i pick up what guy's saying if we do that and we end up with nothing happening on there the the bowling green will end up um you know in a right old state which it looks looking at the photographs, I, I guess that it's pretty much close to that anyway. Um, so, you know, in that sort of situation, I, I'm I'm puzzled. I'm just very worried. It's, it's, it's one of those situations where it's, you know, if you turn to the left, you're, you're screwed. If you turn to the right, you're screwed twice. Um, you know, I, don't, I really don't know about this. I, I, I think there just doesn't seem to be enough information out there to, to, to make me come to a conclusion that any decision that I might make would be the right decision. It's just not there. And there's a lot of, and I, I'm going more along the suspicion, but I, I don't want to do that and then end up with just a, you know, a, a, a rubbish tip there because of that. It needs to be something. And that's why I think it is, the whole thing is tied in together. Whether we like it or not, we can say it's not a planning issue, but planning will affect what happens to the overall state, what we decide and, and you know, whether we defer and we end up with it just getting longer and longer grass there, or we vote to do it now and we end up with somebody earning about £20 a day off pitch and putt and not £30,000 a year. OK, Richard, um, yeah. thank you for that. Uh, let me move on to Councillor Mel Collins. Mel? Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, I think we've arrived at a very complex issue which should never have, ever have arised. arised. Um, and just to answer Councillor Foote's question, if he turns to the left and gets screwed, he turns to the right and he gets screwed, that's called crucifixion. Um, 
So um, to be to be very serious, uh, I, I think there's there's a tr there's a tragedy waiting to happen, but but there is um, there is something good which could happen. Um, so um, I assume at this stage, Chair, you you won't allow us to make a, a, a make a proposition, so to speak, as to a way forward. Uh, I'd I'd rather let all the members okay, hear, hear their views, yeah. and after after that, that, well, that I'll, that's I'll, fine. I'll, yeah. Well, what I, what I want what I really want to say here, um, yes, all of the buildings in Gunnersbury Park, and I've been attached to the Gunnersbury Park Joint Committee until its demise, which is why I didn't have to de declare an interest um, in 2000, and goodness knows when. Um, and and we are, I think we are we have been very fortunate with the amount of money that has been invested by by uh, different uh, different aspects of uh, sporting and cultural heritage. And I think I, and I don't think we should um, we, we should run away with that. In in terms of planning law, we we have one very simple decision to make. But 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 in planning law. You can also make decisions around a decision, and I think that is very, very important, Chair. Um, we we have a building which is next to useless. It's not entirely useless, but it's next to useless. So, if we gave planning permission for that, with perhaps one or two uh, minor alterations in discussion, uh, uh, then we are hanging the golf. Fraternity, sorry, the um, the the Bowles fraternity out to dry. If we don't give planning permission, then where will the developer go? And I I absolutely think that there is a central way here, uh, because I don't think, in all honesty and fairness, that um, CIC. Uh, which obviously has to make money, and that answers, I think, Councillor Dennis, uh, Dennis's question as to where this money will go. It won't go to Hounslow Council, it won't go to Ealing Council either. It'll go to the CIC, the Community Interest uh, Mob. So that's where that money will go. But I think the failing here, Chair, is um, for people to honestly sit down around the table, yes, so that they can speak about how best to use a facility that's already there. Uh, and uh, it's my understanding that uh, golf, uh, that um, Bowls England and the Middlesex Association of Bowls are very keen to be able to support um, any, uh, any future movement on the, on the Bowls but you know what? There's a compromise for everybody here because we have some dilapidated tennis courts, which are not a million miles from where this golf course is. And that brings in uh, to question another issue, Chair, and that is uh, by the side of, the, of, of, that, uh, of, of those tennis courts, there is a building which actually has the utilities there. They just need switching on water, gas and electricity. So um, I, I, I think that there hasn't been enough chat by the people that actually matter. And, and that is the, 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 the people and the fraternity that use the park to get the best advantage. And I think there's one thing that we've all missed so far, and, and that's not surprising, is um, we're, we're building a generation for the future. So why take away something that's already there? And, and, and I'm very, with the greatest of respect to our officers, who I have a great deal of time and, and respect for, I'm really not clear about how much of the, of the, uh, the, the bowls lawn would be taken away with the reconfiguration of this building. And I, I strongly believe that, that, that it, with a little bit of goodwill, that the, that, that building could be uh, could be reconfigured, so none of the none of the uh, uh, bowls green is lost, and in fact, uh, you could have 
um, a, a, a lawns area to, I think it's to the east of it, where people can actually learn how to lay the bowls green. So we're actually possibly looking for training and employment. And that's two things in this day and age, Chair, that we, we, we which is, whilst it's not a planning consideration, it is also something that we've looked at in planning for, for time in memoriam since I've, since I've been around. So what I, what I think is missing is an awful lot of goodwill. What, what, what I would, uh, 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 because there are, there are parts which are fragmented, which with a bit of goodwill um, can be all brought together. You can have um, this uh, pitch and putt uh, um, there. You can have a, an enhanced bowls uh, uh, green there with, with, um, with if call it what you will, like a nursery there. You can have a building which will provide, and of course, in the car park, which is um, when we're talking about healthy eating, we have a, a, a thing which is called pizzeria. We could move that pizzeria down into that area, and the whole the whole caboodle could be um, could, again could be a very integral part of attracting people to the golf and to the bowls. But I, I, I get and I fully appreciate that I've wandered off what is the principle here, and that is that we, we are asked to either reject or support um, the building itself. My, my answer to that is I think that there is room for moderation and reconfiguration to actually make that building work for the good of all. Thank you, Chair. OK, Mel, some good points, uh, but let me I mean, I will ask Leo and Robert to come in after all of us had a, a, um, a position to state what we think uh, or our views are on, on the issue. So let me hear all the views of all the members first before I bring the officers in again. Um, Councillor Bishnu Gurung, discussion and debate. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, Councilor Vishnu Guru, representing from Mahanat Park Ward, and uh, the member of the committee, planning committee. Um, right, I'm also very <coughs> worried about this uh, planning. The one hand, I can see that the pavilion is going to change into cafe, which is uh, uh, which is which is good. But the other hand, the bowling club, they're going to miss the uh, community hall. Uh, which is pretty pretty much shared news. Um, then the biggest worry is that uh, uh, even I asked the question of the planning official, what will happen uh, in the future? And he about the pitch and part things. So <clears throat> he also cannot answer the question definitely. So um, um, it sounds like that uh, then uh, uh, by slowly or by means that uh, the developer might take off the bowling green, which is very uh, upsetting. So that's what is, is really worry. What I wanted to, to see here, the both community and both amenity should have work uh, together. Um, such as the developer is developing the pavilion into the cafe, which is good, and then the bowling member or bowling club could have uh, used that cafe as well, or maybe on the uh, a very low price, or um, they they may consider the other other way around, and then they can still enjoy the bowling. Uh, but the thing is, is uncertain what will happen after if we make a decision go ahead uh, for the planning application um, accept it and then we don't know what will happen in the future so that's why i'm now in the middle so i don't know what to do next thank you okay Bishan, thank you uh, moving on to councillor michael dennis 
Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I mean, I, I, I was listening to uh, Councillor Noah Collins and, and you know, very, very sympathetic to the idea of, <clears throat> you know, an, another plan that could have, could possibly have worked while keeping the Bowling Green. Um, and maybe members might want to consider deferring this to allow the, the applicant to uh, reconsider a further applicant's so applications of tell them to go to go away. That's something to, to think about. Um, in terms of the planning issue about it being a, a community f facility, it, um, it is quite interesting. Um, bowling itself used to be a very popular sport, um, and it's one of these sports that hasn't really passed down with the generation, uh, which is very sad. Um, but one of the things that came out of uh, Leo, your, your presentation, is, is the idea that the community use could be better. I mean, it could be improved. And the, what the applicant has failed to do in this test is to show that it that this it couldn't really be, be improved uh, along the lo 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 local plan policy SCI one, um, and <clears throat> the there's always a potential I think for schools to be involved in bowling and and particularly as a use for old uh, the, the, the older old, older generations, very important to have this sort of facility. It's it is a sport which old older people can do. Um, uh, I, I, I used to do fencing and also almost certainly won't be able to do that uh, when I'm older, but bowling might be an option. And so you know, we have a, we have the option to have this. The cost of installing a, a new bowling green, if we were to remove it and then put it back, would be uh, enormous. I, I, I think I think I, I support the officers here. I think the applicant has failed to approve uh, this test uh, for community use and um, I'm leaning towards uh, rejecting unless uh, we, uh, uh, my colleagues would like to consider um, a deferral uh, for the middle option that Councillor Collins was referring to. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Dennis. Uh, for myself, and let me just pick up from all my colleagues, um, we're, we're quite sort of um, confused, shall I say, as to the direction to follow. Um, my, my personal take on it is that the applicant has had plenty of time to engage with our officers. They've not engaged with our officers, right? So obviously they're not that much, you know, um, this applicant probably is, is indifferent to them. Um, the second thing is some of the things that we we are discussing, they fall outside of the remit of this committee. Um, the planning application is for the, the existing building to be uh, up, updated. What we can't do, and, and this is outside, I say, outside of our um, remit, is to to shackle the the owner, the operator there, into doing bowls when really quite clearly they've got a mindset they want to do something different, which is more commercially viable, right? Um, i.e. I, they want to do a, a, a pit and putt or whatever it is. So. So, so the, the, these sort of things really put put me in in, in a difficult position because whilst, and, and and this this came out of what Guy Lambert said, Councillor Lambert said, which is that you know if if it lies vacant for eighteen months, and my worry is that you know if it goes into um, a state of disrepair, it will attract all undesirable elements that makes it a lot more worse, and then we we're, we're looking this back uh, uh, in in a year, two years time to doing something completely different. Um, yes, the, 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 the bowls are, are, are great, but th there is a diminishing uh, number of people playing this and, and Councillor Dennis brought this up in terms of generational thing. Um, a lot of our younger generation, they're actually playing virtual bowls or uh, in, in words of my good friend Tony Lukey, Councillor Tony Lukey, they're playing Candy Crush. So, you know, th 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 there, there is there is a shift. There is a shift in 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 how people perceive sport. And and you know the older generation, it, it was a more of a physical thing. Where now it, it's more of a virtual thing. Um, do you know, I, I whilst I, I've I've heard all the things, I, I I would still go along with the officer's recommendation. The the reason why I say that, the, the reason why I say that, and and I'm going to bring the officers in. It would give the applicant an opportunity to discuss this further and look at what the committee and the reasons for refusal and maybe 
maybe to address those and get more clarity on a further application. I, I, I think that this dual purpose of doing a pit and putt and doing the bowls, it, 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 it will tease that out, what, what is actually financially viable. Right, uh, because a, a dual mode of operation, it, it's it's very difficult for us as a committee to decide which one they should do. It's really for the applicant to look at and 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 discuss with our officers, so that we can assist them in the best way forward. Um, can I can I at this moment in uh, time before before I get to any any proposals, Mel? I haven't forgotten you, but let me bring in Leo and 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 Robert and ask them, having heard what they've just heard from the committee members, how best we can we can assist move this forward. Right. So Leo and Robert, over to you. I think from uh, my point of view, um, first of all, I just I, I thought it'd be quite useful to point out um, because I think there's been a bit of confusion and um, I can confirm that none of the alterations to the building or the extensions would actually encroach onto the bowling green itself. So just in case any any uh, members were unclear about that, um, that wouldn't be the case. Um, the extensions to the building are solely to the e, uh, to the west, sorry, um, uh, which is sort of to the rear portion of the building. So they're, they're tucked away. So um, that's that's just a point of clarity there. Um, uh, I think it's also important to note that we we have had a previous application for this site back in February of this uh, of last year, um, which we we did refuse. So um, th there is a bit of history for the applicant for, for the site, um, and the applicant has been aware of the reasons why we refused that previous application, and there have been some you know some minor discussions. Uh, without any formal pre-application discussions um, and being being held, um, but to, to to try and establish you know what the what our reasons were, um, and I've explained you know with my delegated report for the previous application what those reasons were, and the applicant has has you know in, in some way attempted to engage. Um, I think as a side note, officers have you know press the, the applicant to, to investigate other sites, um, other potential locations and other potential alternatives within, you know, which might accommodate both uses. Um, this isn't necessarily a planning planning consideration, um, but it's, it's worth noting, but we're not, obviously we have to uh, assess what is in front of us today, which is the conversion of a com the loss of a community building, um, which we don't consider to have been justified in the way that our policy expects it to be. Um, which is in terms of that marketing evidence. And um, as a result, yeah, we, we, just, we simply we can't support the approval because it doesn't meet the policy and there, there aren't any other, you know, pressing reasons in planning terms why that why that should be approved um, uh, that, that might outweigh that harm, um, essentially. Um, OK, thank you, Leo. Um, any, any thoughts, Robert? Yes, I would add to that that the, the difficulty with the loss of community buildings is that um, they are a bit like hen's teeth and are it's difficult for small community groups to re-establish themselves if the opportunity is lost, which is why the policy is drafted the way it is, so that if there is no demand for the current use, um, the people who are interested in repurposing the building must show that they have gone down the route of testing to see if there is any other alternative community use for the building before we can release it for what would be um, to an extent a community use in this case, but very much uh, that would be a minority element of it. And uh, it's it's not unlikely that, that the, the sort of subletting that they might do might end up as being a, a, a children's day nursery, for example, which is is all well and good, but it's actually a commercial paying enterprise and not a not a more freely available community activity of course i haven't seen the uh, looked at the the precise proposal here so i couldn't say if i'm being unfair to them in terms of what they are proposing and leo might be able to to clarify that but um, it's not that we are necessarily against such changes of use where we where we can be clearly satisfied that there is no better alternative um, and we we have to act on the side of the community in these cases to start with before we can um, uh, and, and this this issue is going to come up again shortly before we can um, support the release of such a building to other alternative uses. So Leo, could you just clarify what um, the precise details are of the community offer that they have made? 
Uh, yes, so um, as as uh, briefly outlined on the um, on the presentation, um, the, the four, there's, there's four four offers that they've come forward with. Um, the first is free use of the course for local schools. The second is free use of the facilities for local baby and toddler, toddler groups. And the, the third is reduced rates for seniors. And I think all of the, the above three um, are what they they do in in, in their other sites um, in Acton and uh, Wandsworth. Um, they've also for this particular um, proposal. Uh, they've offered a dedicated 9 to 11 a.m. daily slot for use of the cafe facilities by community uh, groups and users. Um, now, all of the above, I, I suppose, if, if there were to be an approval, um, all of that would need to be secured by a by a, a legal agreement of some kind, unilateral undertaking or something like that. Um, but that, that's what they put forward. Um, but unfortunately, we're not convinced that those, those sort of small benefits um, for the community really justify the, the loss of that um, that that community use, which which obviously once gone um, is it, unlikely to, to to be returned. Um, so um, yeah, hopefully that that clarifies that point. OK, Leo and Robert, thank you for that. Right. Going back to the members, members, you've heard all the debate right, and the discussion that's been had. So really, we want to move on to a proposal. Mel. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, I'm going to ask uh, my colleagues if they would support me in deferring the, uh, this, um, this uh, application. Uh, I don't want to lose the developer, but um, one of the things that we haven't discussed, which is really important, not a planning issue at this stage, I appreciate. However, the uh, the Gun Gunnersbury Park groups like the, the CIC and its other support group are about to embark on, on um, a master plan for the park. And I think that uh, this is something which uh, ought to have been uh, presented as part of the evidence to us in the main body of the report that we looked at. And so be because um, part of the development has merits to it, and be because there are um, other spaces in, in the near vicinity which would, um, which would allow uh, for uh, both of these things that we've been talking about at nauseam tonight, the retention of the bowls club and the introduction of the of the com commercial element. Um, I, I think it's far too easy for us to accept the officer's recommendation purely on, on the basis of what they've, they've said. And as I've said in the beginning, I have the greatest of respect for my officers. But I, I think there is there is too much at stake here for us to make that bold decision uh, and perhaps lose um, a half decent developer uh, with a, a very good idea. And so ideas can sit against ideas. And so I, I wouldn't want to uphold the officer's decision and then as part of the master plan, a little way down the line, find out that we could have accommodated that, we, we could upgrade the, uh, the tennis courts and bring that building back into use, which could also be used as commercial purposes to raise money. I think that that's too precious for us uh, to throw away with the bathwater tonight, Chair. So I formally move that we defer this, uh, we, we defer this application, uh, certainly whilst, um, uh, uh, whilst the uh, master plan uh, uh, is, is being thought through and, and presented because I think this could be an excellent part of that master plan. I'd like to second that, Chair Council Foot. Um, uh, but in saying so, um, I, I have to say that when I first saw this, what, 10 days ago, in the paper coming through, my initial reaction was to say, why are we going for one event? You know, we're going to knock this building down replace it and just replace one event. Why aren't we why aren't we providing two events or three events? You know, there's space enough in the park there to surround that building with events that would fill that. And at the same time, maybe look at expanding it a little bit so there are proper changing rooms in there that are available to members who want to use it. Um, now at the moment I'm looking at this the plan for uh, the proposed GF plan. 
and, and, and there aren't any facilities to change. Yeah, there's plenty of room in there. The, I, I don't, you know, the old guys and, and, and ladies, because it's a ladies and men's sport, uh, bowling, uh, but they'd be quite happy to sit in the cafe and have a cup of coffee or drink a lemonade or whatever um, and take this. So, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of merit in what Mel is saying um, about deferring it um, and, and looking for them to come back. I'm, I'm still, I mean, I don't know who this CF, CIF group is. They, they sound very similar to an organisation that used to be running our parks in, in Feltham and Heston and around there, which fortunately we got rid of. Um, I mean, I don't know if they are, what well, you know, Ealing's um, answer to to that group or what but i'm i'm quite you know they, they i'm not sure whether they've missed the point or whether there is they've got another um idea up their sleeve but you know to me it, the answer was obvious here we are we've got a building it needs renewing it needs rebuilding to configure to uh, what is required today which is a, a multi-purpose building but they haven't designed it as a multi-purpose building. They've designed it as a cafe. You know, what it really needs is a multi-purpose building that includes a cafe, includes, a, um, you know, a, a, a changing rooms, that sort of thing. I mean, close to me in, in Hamworth, on Hamworth Air Park, this is, uh, uh, is Bishnu's area, but, you know, there's a, there's a uh, one of the old pavilion buildings there has been converted into a club where they've got a bar and, and they serve drinks. There's changing rooms in there for the football and the rugby that's playing on the park. All of those things are there and they, and, and they accommodate that need in those buildings. I can't see why they can't accommodate this in here. I'm so suspicious of what's, of what's being pushed forward. I just see another agenda in there, and, but I'm, it's not being revealed to me as to what it is. But I, I agree with Mel. I'm seconding it because I'm supporting his argument and, and that's the way I would like us to go forward. Thanks, Jim. Okay, okay Richard. Um, I, I would want to put a question to Mel Collins, Councillor Mel Collins and yourself, Richard. Um, if deferral is what this committee is minded to do, now bearing in mind that CIC has got this master plan and master plans take always a very long time to materialize on the ground. How much of a deferral period would this committee want to look at? Mel or Richard before yeah, we go to vote? This is, I think this is our problem. You know, there is so much information being withheld that we don't know. We, I, I do not I know agree enough, with Richard. Stuff, yes. enough been said today to give me a way in which I could answer your question. I mean, I'm, I'm looking now, I'm seeing, I, I scribbled some notes down, you know, the, as Mel was, was speaking, but I was saying, I was saying initially reject, but demand that um, the CIC to come back with a plan that includes both bowls, pitch and butt, and any other facility we can add together and build a proper facility for the park that encompasses all of those needs. Now I've written that, I, I, but I, I, you know, Mel came in with this motion and I seconded that because that's, you know, doing the same thing. But there isn't enough information from them. What we need to do, and, and I pick up, as soon as Mel said that there is this um, proposal that is coming, you know, it's being looked at in, in the revision of the whole park about what they're going to do, you know, what are they trying to do? Jump in before they get stuck with something they're not that they're not going to make as much money out of? It, it just worries me, and and, and I'm absolutely, you know, it, it's it's I, I'm I, I can't see a reason. I can't give you a reason or a time scale for for um, delay. Um, it's just not there. We need to know the answers. We okay. need to know the answers about what going to be part plan is going to be, what are they working on? We need to know, is there a wider plan at CRC? CRC had the ample opportunity to come tonight and talk to us. Where are they? They ain't here. Hmm. OK, Richard, that uh, points are well made, but uh, personally speaking, I still think that, you know, it, it's a very open ended request 
to defer and 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 that's something that you know um, if CIC was very serious as you say they would have come and engaged with our officers um let, 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 let me let me bring in Michael Dennis right before we move to the vote so I don't um, miss any, any... Uh, so uh, the chair with respect to you've missed councillor Gorham no, no, uh, I, I haven't. The, the only reason I say that is because Councillor Dennis put his hand up. So because we've already been through the process of individually going through councillors, the only part we need to go through, which follows on from your motion, is actually the vote. Right. Well, no, which, I, yes, I apologise for interrupting. Yeah. No, 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 no issues whatsoever. As long as it was a quarter, you know, we all know exactly what we're doing. That's what counts. Councillor Dennis. Thank you, Chair. Very kind of you. Uh, no, I, I just very quickly, I was just going to say what a shame it was that CIC didn't come today. I completely agree with what Councillor Foote has said. If they had come here, we would have been able to have an idea of time period and be able to discuss this sort of strategic look. What, what a shame. What a shame they're not here. It would have made a big difference. Thank you. Chair, okay. Chair can I just um, give some advice on protocol? The reason that the, um, there aren't speakers this evening is because the application is being recommended for refusal. Um, and if an application is refused, the applicant then has the opportunity to appeal. So right. that's why we don't normally take any speakers on an application being recommended for a refusal. That's why. OK, Wendy, thank you very much for, for that clarity. Um, now, um, for what it's worth, and, and really we, 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 we need to move to the vote really, right, to, to get, get a grip of this thing, um, because because it's open ended, I'm I'm very mindful, right, of what the officers are saying. They they can they can come and engage with our officers at any time, and they've got I think, is it three months or six months to to apply again, right? Given the recommendations that we would put forward, if if this is minded to be the officer recommendation, or if it is with uh, what Mel is proposing and being seconded by Richard Foot. Um, Let's go to the vote because I think that's the only way we're going to tease this out. So, Councillor Richard Foote, uh, we, we, we've got a proposal that's been uh, properly um, nominated and, and now seconded, moved and seconded. So, um, this is to, to the vote on the recommendation that is being moved by Councillor Mel Collins and seconded by Richard Foote, which is deferral. So you're voting on deferral, not the officer's recommendation, right, at this moment in time. Um, so you've got to use those pres prescriptive words when you engage in the vote. So Councillor Richard Foote. All right, yes, my name is Councillor Richard Foote. I represent Hamworth Ward. I'm a member of the planning committee, the vice chair of that committee. I have been present for all of the debate. I've heard all of the arguments and I vote in favour of the resolution. OK, thank you, Richard. Councillor Mel Collins. Uh, my name is Councillor Mel Collins. I represent Brentford Ward and a member of the planning committee. I have heard all of the uh, arguments in the debate and the presentations. I was present at all times and so therefore I support the resolution. That is deferral, yes? Yes. Thank you. OK, Councillor Bishnu Grung. Hi, I'm Councillor Bishnu Gurung, representing Hanat Park Ward and committee member of the planning committee. Um, I've been throughout the uh, meeting here and I uh, um, whole part of the debate, I listen whole part of the debate and I'm going to uh, vote for the uh, for uh, the proposal that Mel Co uh, Colin made just now. Thank you. OK, OK, that's that's deferral. Yeah, OK. Yeah. All right. OK, Councillor Michael Dennis. Uh, good evening. Yes, my name is Councillor Michael Dennis. I, I am a councillor for Chiswick Riverside Ward in London Hounslow. I have a seat on this committee. I have been present for the whole debate and listened to the arguments and I vote in favour of um, the resolution. Thank you. That's deferral. Yes, yes. I apologise. Yes. That's what I meant. Sorry, for, de for okay. deferral. That's fine. Yes. That's fine. That's fine. OK, right. And myself, Councillor Amrit Mann, I've been here for the whole debate and been present throughout. Um, I've heard all the evidence and I actually vote against it. And the reason why I vote against it, I think that there hasn't been sufficient engagement and it's up to the applicant 
to engage with our officers. And it, it's it's rather sad that we've, we've got an application here, which I think with a bit of work could have been over the threshold. But uh, this honourable committee is very gracious in that it's allowed uh, uh, a deferment. So uh, this, this item is now deferred and maybe our officers would request the applicants to take on board what the committee has su suggested and and bring it back as and when we get CIC engagement involved. I don't know when that's likely to be, uh, but really it, it's it's down to the officers to engage with them now. OK, um, so this is this. No, 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 that's that's fine. This this committee is all powerful. It's 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 voted for deferment. It gets deferment, right? <laughs> OK, so let's let's move on to uh, the next item. Um, we have now spent colleagues uh, just under uh, one minute, one hour, 51 minutes on on, on just the first item. So uh, Item four is 152 Bath Road on pages 19 to 59. Um, I don't envisage spending another two hours on, on an item because obviously after this item we will have a short comfort break. Right, so who's who's moving this, Robert? That's Hello. me, Chair. Right, okay, Robert, off you go. This this is the main in-depth right presentation because there are yep. no speakers, no presentations whatsoever. Right, okay. okay. All right, off you Bear go. with me and I'll just share my screen with you. Here we go. Yes, Jay, as you can see, this is a site on the southwest corner of Bath Road and Wellington Road North. It has a, a, an area of approximately 0.1 of a hectare. That's a thousand square meters. Previously, it was occupied by the Windsor Castle pub, which uh, closed at the beginning of 2016 and was demolished with permission in 2017. Um, its context is you have uh, four story buildings to the south and east. That's Browood Court and West Point Court, I think it's called. And then a three story building, um, uh, a Maitland place, just across the road, which is a council estate uh, just here. Um, uh, the uh, proposal is to redevelop with a five storey building. Uh, you can see the layout here with cycle parking, uh, some car parking, refuse storage, um, and uh, a five storey building fronting the corner and running down along towards Hounslow Town Centre. Um, it would be it would meet the council's affordable housing target 40 percent. Um, the floor areas of the flats all conform to um, appropriate design standards and they are all dual aspect. Um, it does not meet the council's uh, amenity space standard for new dwellings by uh, the communal amenity space is approximately 50% of what it should be. It is, however, a fairly sustainable building. Um, uh, air source heat pumps and uh, approximately uh, 60% carbon reduction, but not zero carbon. Uh, there have been a variety of objections, which I will just run through with you in uh, brief. Uh, bear with me a moment. Uh, and the principal objections are that it's an overdevelopment to the site. It would generate unacceptable levels of traffic and congestion. It would increase pollution. Um, it's uh, uh, the building height would cause loss of light and the height would be unacceptable. Um, the, uh, there are concerns about the location and management of social housing within the uh, development. There are objections to the loss of the pub, to loss of privacy to neighbours um, and concerns about the uh, air quality uh, assessment, which has been addressed since. And I should at this point break off and talk you through the addendum that we have already before you just to explain because there is um, an error. Firstly, uh, revised elevations have been put into the addendum, which you can see here now. Um, and I would draw your specific attention to an update on the uh, status of the London plan. And more importantly, um, 
a, a cut and paste error in the addendum which refers to the site as being designated as metropolitan green belt which very clearly it is not so i'm sorry about that in correcting a drafting error we made another drafting error um, the question arises of the loss of the pub um, and again, it's a similar principle to this matter of the uh, loss of uh, a community use on the Bowling Green site. In this case, it's very clear that the pub has been abandoned and there is no demand for such a use in the locality. And so we are prepared to recommend that members accept this. Um, there are concerns about the effect on neighbours. And if I just run through the uh, layout here, um, uh, you can see how uh, the proposal is following the building line on Bath Road and Wellington Road on the right. Um, and it is quite a significant scale at five stories. Uh, it perhaps could have taken better use of the design at the corner. Uh, here's the um, amenity space that you can see on the roof. Um, together combined with a series of individual balconies, some of which are quite generously sized. Uh, and some of which are designed as winter gardens in order to help control um, noise to the flats uh, because both Wellington Road and Bath Road are busy main roads. Um, and some of which are designed as open balconies and they do exceed the minimum standard of five square meters um, in some cases generously and in some cases just. Um, we have received uh, late uh, information about the air quality management assessment of the site. Um, air quality management figures are based on 2021 figures, but it's anticipated that the air quality um, in the locality is going to reduce towards 2023 because the um, premises are, uh, while they're on a main road, um, it's expected that um, the change in vehicle use and type of vehicles is going to significantly improve air quality in and around the borough, which is quite important. Um, that's a brief run through. Uh, I'm happy to share photographs of the site if uh, members wish, and I welcome your questions. OK, thank you, Robert. Um, questions to Robert at this stage. Councillor Richard Foote on this presentation? Um, yeah, at this moment, only really one question. I, 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 it's really about the, um, you know, zero carbon. Uh, I mean, to me, this development, if I'm reading it right, they're doing an awful lot to try and reach zero carbon, but they're only getting 60%. You know, what, what does a building have to do, or a developer have to do, to actually get to zero carbon? I, you know, it looks to me like an impossible task, but maybe I'm just a, a layman that doesn't really understand it. That's um, uh, thank you, Councillor Foote. Well, what they clearly what they have to do is they have to super insulate and they have to make sure that buildings are properly airtight and ventilated in a manner that um, uh, conserves and exchanges heat. Um, and uh, it. it it does appear to me that a new build ought to be able to be zero carbon and if that is a matter that uh, you wish us to explore further with the um, uh, the applicants we can certainly do so but our sustainability consultant has looked at their submission and the 60 percent um, carbon reduction plus a payment to the carbon offset fund is what is proposed and considered acceptable in this case can i just okay. follow that up chair because you know i'm thinking we as planning committee members are looking at a building so it's going to be there for minimum 30 years more like 50 60 years before it gets replaced by anything um you know and we don't seem to be our, our targets don't seem to be high enough I, I don't know and i'm just hearing what robert said maybe we should be going back to them i don't know you know because we're not talking about something that's going to be here tomorrow uh, here today and gone tomorrow we're talking about a building that probably about 50 years. And if we don't start doing this, it's, it's just not going to happen, is it? We're not, we're not going to hit zero carbon. We, we, I mean, you know, it's all right and paying us money, but what do we do with that? You know, that doesn't give us zero carbon. OK, well, um, I, I think the application in front of us is judged by the rules as set out today, 
right? So we, 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 we're judging them. Obviously, you know, it's a bit like sitting a test. If you want four out of 10, it's not a problem. Just turn up, sign sign your name and put the date on. You get four out of 10, but to get 10 out of 10, it's, it's a lot more harder work and it costs the developer a lot more money. That's what I suspect, but I'm sure Robert's going to interject and tell me otherwise. Good. Robert? Well, clearly it does cost the developer a great deal more money because they are prepared to make a cash in lieu contribution of £66,000 towards the Hounslow Carbon Offset Fund, which we could then use for public purposes to um, uh, ensure uh, better carbon reductions elsewhere in the borough. Um, and it's a question of whether or not members think that, that mo the money should uh, go into the Carbon Offset Fund or that we should be asking the developer to uh, provide a zero carbon building. OK, Robert, thank you for that uh, clarification. Uh, let me move on to Councillor Mel Collins. Mel? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, oh, excuse me. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, a few questions, because obviously I haven't got the pictures in front of me. I'll ask the simple one first. Is, um, does this building lend itself to solar, solar panels? Uh, the proposal does include solar panels on the roof, Councillor. Um, that, that, yeah. that answers that. Um, could you tell me the meterage between um, the, the new building and any o overlooking which w was in your list of objections? Uh, yes, Chair, if you just, uh, sorry, Councillor, if you just bear with me, I can give you some figures. Um, the, the layout has been designed to prevent um, intervisibility between windows that, that are within um, such distances. Um, the block to the east, Boswood Court, um, would not be readily visible from this, the site because of the, the layout of the flats and the fact that actually this is principally in front of the windows, when I say in front of, forward of the windows of Boswood Court, which adjoins it. Um, Ede Close, which is to the south, would have a distance of more than 21 metres from the rear elevation of the uh, development, uh, which exceeds the uh, yardstick set out in the London yeah. plan. And that is the closest uh, we get to uh, overlooking any habitable room windows. So all in all, it, it conforms to the uh, requirements of the London plan. Yeah, and could you just um, just confirm for us uh, where, where where you've got balconies? Uh, what uh, what did you say that uh, we're going to be put there to to muffle noise? Did you say it was like plant arrangements? Uh, no, it's glazing. It's what glazing. they call oh, it's good. what they call that a winter was, garden balcony. So it's it's a, yeah, it's a little bit like having a conservatory. It, if, it, yes. if it wasn't there, that, that's yeah. fine. Um, my, 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 it's two to, two to go, chair. So uh, at the base of the or, or it, the surrounds of the building, does it does it lend itself to any soft landscaping? Yes, it does. There's a gap between the front of the building and Bath Road, um, and uh, I'll just. Not for your benefit, but for the other councillors, um, Council Collins. I'm now showing the um, the plan, which shows that the most external space between the, the building and the street is on the north side, on the Bath Road frontage, and there would be there would be a hedge, as shown in the drawings, and there is scope for landscaping, and a landscaping condition to require submission of such detail before the matter uh, progresses. Excellent. So the last one is is always my vexing question. Um, could you give us a breakdown of the 40% affordable housing, please? Uh, I can, yes, bear with me. Right, it would be um, eight affordable rent um, dwellings, which are now called social rent, I should correct, four intermediate um, ownership. Uh, so that's 12 compared yeah. to 18 uh, market uh, properties. So that that's uh, that it that is at or exceeding the 40 yeah. percent. And the, okay. the breakdown is satisfactory to our housing team in yeah, terms no, of no, tenure. I'm, sati I'm satisfied with that because at least we've got eight there with affordable rents. Yeah. Chair, I'm grateful. Thank, that's me done. OK, Mel, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, Bishnu Grung. <laughs> Councillor. Thank you, Chair. Um, Robert, I've got just one question here. What is the highest um, uh, 
the building, uh, the what is the height of the highest building? Uh, five stories. Um, when if you just hang on a minute, I will see if we can read the figure off here. Uh, uh, no, we can't. I will have to refer to a drawing. Hold on a moment. So each story, as I suspected, is approximately three meters. So that's one, two, three, four, five um, plus plus uh, plus the um, uh, the structures on the roof. So that's six. So that's eighteen point six meters in total. Oh, thank you. Is there any um, any other building is uh, loss of light because of this height? Uh, no, there, there, there was a daylight study submitted with the application and there is one room in one house uh, which is on the other side of uh, the Bath Road which has been affected and that room I believe was a converted garage and has a, um, uh, has a, um, uh, an overhang in front of it and I'm, I can just show it to you. Uh, yeah, bear with me. There it comes. <coughs> Uh, when the image um, was rather fuzzy, I'm hoping the image will will resolve itself in a minute. But you can just see it's this this little window here, uh, which is, has been built with an overhang attached to the porch, as people sometimes do. And because of that overhang, it was already comparatively dark. But mm -hmm. interestingly, the other windows on that house, the ground floor bay at the front to the right of the door and the upper windows are not adversely affected. And that is the only um, room that uh, is anywhere in a building close to the site that has had an unacceptable daylight effect and based on that one incidence we did not consider that uh, it would merit refusal of planning permission. Thank you Reva, that's all my question. Thank you Chair. Okay, thank you Councillor Grung. Uh, Councillor Michael Dennis, questions to Robert. Uh, thank you, Chair. Robert, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I just had a question about, uh, actually a couple of questions. Uh, so my first question relates to one of the objections to the applicant application, which was that there, there was concern about shops on the ground floor, but there, there, actually there were no sh shops or commercial premises actually in the plans. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, they're, uh, re they're referring back to previous applications for the site, uh, which included um, flat above commercial, uh, which I think was to try and um, mitigate the loss of the commercial use, which was the uh, the pub, and also to acknowledge that um, ground floor buildings next to busy roads are not necessarily the best place to have a flat. Um, but they've dealt with this by setting back from the uh, the boundary. Sure. Thank you very much. Now the second question is about the um, the the about the air quality uh, con con consultants and I see that the, the council's consultants uh, have requested revisions that form part of the information uh, revised in, uh, information package. So it, are, the, are the council's officers uh, uh, requesting a report on the air quality at the moment? We have received one and we're satisfied with its, uh, with its sure. content. Oh that's helpful thanks, no, it helps yeah. to have that update. No thank you for that. Uh, now, my next question relates to uh, I th really follow up from uh, Councillor Mill Collins's question about um, affordable housing. I see that three of the uh, units are, ac are wheelchair accessible, but are any of those three in the affordable uh, flat category? Yes, they are. Oh, brilliant. All, all three of them. Uh, I can't tell you if it's all three. Off the oh, OK. Head, but sure. Hang on a minute. Sure. I did have a, a briefing about that earlier on. Um, no, the applicant is happy to make two wheelchair units as social rented and one as private. In the report, it states that one would be social rented, one intermediate and one private. So it's it's now two uh, 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 social rent rather than one of each. So it's now two social rent and one private as opposed to one social rent, one intermediate and one private, which is a better outcome 
Yes. Oh yes, no, no, that, that's much better. Thank you yep. very much. And, and just one final question um, was on um, at paragraph 8.2. Uh, there was just one point I didn't quite understand. Uh, it's still on the fourth line from the bottom of that paragraph. I'll just read it out. Uh, although uh, three of the two bedroom, three person homes measure 7.4 meters, there would be dual aspect. And um, what does that mean? Uh, dual aspect is all about having uh, windows in more than one wall, um, which in terms of the way you live in a room is far more attractive. Um, it's, it's far, it's, it, it makes the room a, a far better place to, uh, to live in. It gives you better light and it also gives you cross ventilation, which means that um, yeah, you get better fresh air provisions, uh, particularly when there's um, uh, overheating in the summer and you can have a through draft. Mm. And it's part of uh, the uh, mayor's housing standards that uh, single aspect dwelling should be avoided where at all possible. Absolutely oh, fine. Thank you. Thanks so very much. Um, no, no further questions from me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Dennis. Uh, no questions to me. Uh, questions from me to you, Robert. So let's move on to the debate and discussions element of it. So Councillor Richard Foote, any debate, any discussions on, on this? Sorry, Chair, just to say we do have a slight technical problem with the uh, video at the moment. OK, um, shall, shall we have a go for a comfort break for 10 minutes and then come back? Yep. <clears throat> yep. Idea. Yeah. OK, yeah, I have to do me, but then I'm, I'm right close to the kettle. OK, well, look, it's it's uh, it's uh, 817, right? We'll meet at 827, right? So let's adjourn the meeting for, for 10 minutes. Thank you, we'll come for break. OK, Thank all right. You. OK, OK.
I'll call you back when when we're done. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Bye. Patrick, are you on the line? Are we all back? Oh, not quite yet, cuts the colleagues. I was just wondering if Patrick was there. Just had time to ring my son. He was, but he's watching the Brentford match. Score is nil all, councillor. It's one nil to Brentford. Is it? Oh, yeah. Not according off. to my, not according to yeah, my phone. Isn't it? Yeah, got off. Scored after fourteen minutes. Ah. Um, Cardiff and oh, oh, Norwich beat Bristol City two nil. That's that. The game's gone. Um, Just to remind all, all members, the microphones are still live. <laughs> Oh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, Middlesbrough are winning 2 0, wherever that is, because I can't read that one. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to change the page in case I lose it. <laughs> OK, we've got, we've got about a minute. So, so you uh, might want to move suspension of standing orders, because I don't think we're going to no, be finished by I nine o'clock. Yeah, can okay. I formally move well, that? Hang on. When we start, once we, we start. Yeah. Yeah. Once we start, oh, Mel, right, you move sorry. it. All right. Yeah, and I'll yeah. second. So. Okay. Chair, just to say, I haven't been able to contact um, our standby producer at the moment, um, so I'm still not able to to put content live. Okay. So, what, what's 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 the remedy? 
I, I need to disconnect and reconnect, but I need to ensure that they're also present um, to keep the meeting live. Hi, Adrian, I'm here. OK, I'm back. OK, thanks. Thanks, Rob. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll restart then. Okay. One second. Yeah, I'm looking looking at your background, Bish. You're not listening to me. It looks like an airfield in Southeast Asia. I went to <laughs> <laughs> and a landing every three days. That was that was usually to come in to take the bodies out. These days, only we can imagine it, and okay, you know, Richard, we cannot feel it. We can just imagine. That's all. Or it could be it could have been Heathrow Airport in 1953. <laughs> well, I wasn't, I wasn't in this world at that time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Are you actually there, Councillor? Um. <laughs> yeah, we. Okay, we, we just need to find out when we go live. Yeah. Are we missing any of the officers? Are they all present? I think so. Yes, present. OK, I'm here. Yeah. OK, that's good. Good. Soraya, um, I'm unsure whether that was an issue with just Adrian's um, machine, but as a second producer, could you confirm to us when we are able to continue? Um, I have lost connection as well, unfortunately. Um, Wendy, I am looking at it right now for you. OK, OK, well, just just let us know when you're ready to go live. So sure, thank you. Uh, Councillor Mann, I can confirm that the microphones are still live. I've just been um, <coughs> I've just been thanked for the football score update I gave a, a few minutes ago. <laughs> Very good. OK, the uh, multitasking committee. <laughs> Very no, good. Naughty, naughty boys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody said anything out of turn unless you happen to be a Luton supporter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, hi, Councillor Mann. I am waiting for Adrian to come back um, to fix the IT issue because he's from IT, but I'm not sure where he's gone. Um, so if we just give it a few moments, um, we should hear something from him soon. I, I think he went looking for you because <laughs> that, that's what he told me that I don't know where she's gone. So, OK, well, look, uh, we, we will sit tight until so you tell us that phone, you can. Uh, I'm right. Sorry, I don't have his phone. I, I, no, no, I'm wondering if uh, if any, any of the officers have got his phone to find out where he is. Where he's gone. I think he said he was restarting. And I've got the, there's people um, advising that it's either paused or it's just audio that they're hearing rather than being mm. able to see. So it seems like a mixture. So it does appear that there are some wider technical issues for people who are watching from home this evening. Mm. Yes, um, I, I think this is a similar problem that we face mm. on a daily mm. basis because everybody's on the internet at the moment, you know, with lockdown. Absolutely. So the uh, the bandwidth has been all used up. 
it doesn't ha help with the weather as well because there's quite heavy rain out there at the moment mm. and I'm on satellite I, I you know I tend to lose it in this but it's holding up at the moment on my end uh, wind must be blowing from the other direction <laughs> <laughs> yeah It's better than the old days back in the 60s when you had a TV and if somebody walk across, hey, you'd get a fuzzy line come across your TV. Those were the days. Yeah. <laughs> it took longer to for it to switch on than to actually watch the program. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or if you... But you had telly in the 1950s, did you? You must be posh. <laughs> well, it, it, it was um, 66. 6667. All right. There's an old black and white TV where the dot, when you switch it on, the dot comes on and then it takes forever to heat up. Yeah. And then when you switch it off, it takes forever for the dot to disappear from the middle of the screen. Yeah, you had a, a that's, that was your end of viewing was to see the dot disappear. Then you could go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. All these lovely flat screens now as well. Those tellies are sort of deeper now than they're now wide. Yeah. Hi everyone, just to give you a quick update. Um, Adrian is restarting his machine and he'll try to log in and try to get the event started soon. Okay. So just bear with us and just finding out what the issue is. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Chair, just a quick reminder. Um, the audio is going out live still as we as we hang on. I'm sure my committee members will be on their best behaviour. <laughs> or at least keep it light. Starting to blow a lot out there. Wind's got up quite heavily. Yeah. What is it? Windstorm, I've forgotten the name. It's something, it's something weird. Like Christoph. Christoph. Christoph, yes. Christoph. You think it was coming from Russia with a name like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Not across the Atlantic. Christoph Putin. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's all right. He's got, bought himself a new house, hasn't he? Yeah. He's three up and three down. And 44 across. <laughs> I found that... Um, I, I, I was couldn't help myself, you know, sort of in between me. I caught the bit where they actually did the um, presidential inauguration this afternoon. Also, you know, that's how I actually got to see it. I didn't think I was going to, but I, I found myself feeling like, you know, at last we've got here, you know, without any more stupidity or murders or like, high drama. Hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I felt a very high level of relief. I mean, I worked quite extensively in the States back in the sort of 80s and that, and you know, I've still got a lot of friends out there that I keep in touch with, but you know, it's it's dreadful when you see something going downhill like that and there are people that, uh, I mean, that's the United States, it's a mixture. It depends which part you hit, you know, and they're, they're, you get these people Hmm, very, very difficult situation, that one. I'm just glad that it's passed off. See, um, you know, a, a, a VP that, uh, you know, is, is the first female VP, but not only that, the first female, um, a, a, a woman of colour, um, of, um, 
sort of Asian origin, etc. in the family. It's it's wonderful to see, you know, something like that. And you think that it's only um, two presidents removed that we first had our first black president mm. with Obama. So, you know, it's 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 showing that, that, that things do move. Unfortunately, sometimes you, they move and then, <laughs> and then you climb it back up. Again. Yeah, well, that's yeah. democracy for you, isn't it? Well, that's the glory of democracy, but it's also showed um, its vulnerability. Hmm. That's 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 the problem when you see that's true. Yeah. mobs a acting like that. In yeah, I think because we had the same here, didn't we? In uh, in Parliament, was it the son of what's his name, the pop singer that raided Parliament and sprayed was it paint or something across there? I think now. Oh, Brian Ferry's son. That's it, yeah. yeah I was trying to think of his name, yeah. Ferry. Yeah, but a very spoilt child, you know, sort of been. Obviously, his father's wealth uh, had been used to send him to a very proper school and be brought up in a proper way, but was totally spoilt. Mm. <laughs> Never mind. We're on live. <laughs> this is this is one of the problems with with virtual meetings because you, you you don't know how long the out outtake is going to be. Yeah? yeah. So you know it could be five minutes. It could be fifty minutes. Yeah. At least we're in, we're in between two cases, so we haven't got to sort out who heard what on a case. Yeah. <laughs> but none of us have missed anything. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I know that it, it's where Councillor Dennis finished his questioning. So that, that was nice and easy. So he wasn't in between a uh, sentence. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so we just pick it up from there. But the issue is, I, I, as I say, I don't know how long it's going to be out, and and sometimes it has an impact on people watching at home, yeah. and and certainly also on the officers because they've got other lives besides this as well. Yep. Hi, well, just to give you another update, um, it, we're gonna Adrian's gonna try and restart from IT's end, and then he'll come back to us. So we just okay. Any 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 know. sorry any any idea in terms of time because obviously, as I was just discussing with uh, my colleagues, yeah, because the the outtake is 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 quite yeah or the outage is quite um, you know uh, important. So we're we hoping in the next within the next ten minutes we okay. should get this. Fixed. Okay, that, that, that's oh, fine. So I'm still here. So if I leave the meeting, then the whole meeting will will will, will close. So I'm just waiting for Adrian to come back from my. Okay, team. okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you for that. piece of useless information for you is Fulham have uh, just taken the lead against Manchester United. Fulham? Yeah. Well done, Fulham. <laughs> uh, I'm quite pleased about that from a Tottenham point of view. Yep. I remember when I was a little kiddie, uh, Jerry Francis and Stan Bowles yeah. came came to our class. Is that really? Yeah. yeah, that was all those years ago. You know, God, I think it was. Um, Jerry Francis, so, the first million pound player, was he? I don't think. Something. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's a big number in those days, but I can't remember. I mean, it might even be the first ten pound player. Or like, oh. <laughs> no, that was when you was a boy uh, in, in 1890. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as I was on my way to the Boer War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's 1972, 73, might have been in 74. Hmm. All right. 72, 74, let's think, 71. I was just coming off the council then. <laughs> Blimey, okay. I've just finished six years on the on, in 19. No, sorry, no, that must have been 74. I was coming off the council. I'd been on for six years. 
and British Airways had wanted to send me to college, but not if I was going to take three days a week off for council work. So, so how long have you done so far? In total council? Yeah, yeah. Well, six years in the first two, because they were three years sessions then, okay. 68 and 71. To 74. So, so that, that, that was the alderman or, or was the councillors? There was still alderman then, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ted Pauling was an alderman. Um, who else? There's a few others there. Uh, 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 Williams was an alderman, wasn't he? No, no. He was a councillor for uh, one of the Bedford, uh, Brentford wards. Uh, Mr. Jane? Mr. Jane, Jane, J A I N, Asian, Asian black. No, I don't know him, no. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to think, because we had, I mean, in those days you had the three constituencies. So you had Feltham, um, Heston and Isleworth, and Bradford and Chiswick. Mm -hmm. So there were three constituencies then. And Heston um, was a solid, all, all the Heston area, solid Tory. Uh, I know, I know, because when I, when I became a councillor, uh, it was a conservative seat mm. that 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 changed hands. Mm. Well, my first, I mean, sixty years got elected. Yes. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I yeah, just wanted just wanted to mention that you it is still legal if you can be heard um, on audio. I'm just wondering if you want to try and carry on. Um, I don't know what Patrick thinks our legal advisor. Okay, yeah. Um, Richard, what, what do you think? Sh should we just continue with audio? Is, this, well, is, is it one of our technical advisors? We, have we got, we've got all of the other officers here, yeah? We're not visual. We're not, people can't see it on the screen, on the internet, um, but they well, can hear us. Yeah, but we can so, see each other though. Yeah, we, we can see, see each other. But, yeah. I can see, yeah. yeah. I can see. So, yeah. so, the, so, the, so the question is that... Yeah, let's do you, push on. Do you, Okay, you want to continue on audio, yeah? Um, yeah hi everyone. Legal chair, yeah. Why not? Yeah, we can continue as a podcast for now until we get this issue, until the issue is fixed by IT. Okay, let, 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 let's do that because uh, obviously we're mindful of the time and also mindful of uh, you know what what we can physically do within within the time span that we've got because uh, we've got to move suspension of standing orders. Um, okay, Mel, uh, I, I think let, let let's reconvene and start. Yeah, so I'll, I'll move suspension of standing orders to the conclusion of business, Chair. OK, thank you, Mel. Is there a seconder? I second it. Right. OK, seconded by uh, Vishnu Gurung. OK, so standing orders have been suspended. Let's uh, move on. And uh, I didn't have any questions for uh, Robert Coomba on his presentation regarding the 152 Bath Road. OK, so that means we'll just move on to. To the uh, um, to the vote. Um, Chair, sorry, Chair, I think you were on comments. Yeah, com you got to comment. Yeah, co we, we did comments and discussion. OK. Yeah, so uh, the last person before we broke off was Councillor Dennis. I see, yeah. And then myself, I didn't have any further questions for Robert. Right, so now we're moving on to to the vote. So I need I need somebody to propose. Can, uh, can, I, move yeah, can I propose then? OK, so between Vishnu and, and uh, Mel Collins, uh, a proposal has been made in regards to and what we want to do is to either approve the office of recommendation or have one of your own. So which which one is it, Mel? Oh, well, is to uh, to um, approve the uh, or I'm, I'm moving the recommendation of the officers on the basis that I've been here and heard all of the arguments. Oh, that, 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 that's for the vote. But yeah, you, you move the proposal. Um, yeah. And Councillor Grung, yeah, Councillor yeah. Grung has seconded. Okay, so we've got a proposal, and we've got got it seconded. So now we're going to move on to the vote. And using the prescriptive words, colleagues, right? So let me move to Councillor Richard Foot. Councillor Richard Foot. I'm biting my tongue not to take advantages. Um, yes, yeah, so I. I uh, my name's Councillor Richard Foot. I represent Hamworth Ward. I'm a member of the Planning Committee and Vice Chair of that committee. I have been here throughout uh, the discussion plus the addendum bits either end um, and um, I've heard all of the debate 
and I vote in favour of the resolution. OK, thank you, Richard. Uh, Councillor Mel Collins. Um, I'm Councillor Mel Collins. I represent Brentford Ward as a member of this planning committee and I have been present and have heard the arguments of the debate and I have moved approval and so therefore I'm in favour of the resolution. OK, thank you. Councillor Bishnu Gurung. Thank you. My name is Council Bishnu Gurung. I'm representing from Hanat Park Ward. I have been here whole of the meeting and heard all the debate and I'm uh, voting for the uh, officer uh, proposal recommendation and I second it also. I vote for the proposal. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Grung. Uh, Councillor Michael Dennis. Good evening, yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, my name is Councillor Michael Dennis. I have a visit um, Riverside Ward. I have a seat on this committee I uh, and I vote in favour of, of the uh, S suggestion to um, uh, to, to officer's recommendation. Officer's recommendation. Sorry, officer's yes. recommendation. <laughs> you you've heard the debate and you were present throughout. Yeah? And I was present throughout. Yes, that's okay, right. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay, Councillor Amrit Mann, I've been present throughout the debate. I've heard all the evidence, and I am in favour of moving the officer's recommendation. So, colleagues, that is unanimously carried. So that is approved. Now let's move on to item item five, which is unit five, Ballsbridge Industrial Estate on pages 60 to 100. So who is doing the presentation? Robert? I think I can, no, I'm, yes, I'm live. I think I can hand straight over to Sam Smith, who's the case officer who will okay, do a better job than I will. No, 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 Sam's very capable. Come on, Sam. Thank you very much, Robert. And thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sam Smith. I'm the Deputy Area Planning Manager for the West of the Borough. The application before you concerns Unit 5 on the Bullsbridge Industrial Estate, which is in Hayes Road and Southall, which is right up in the northwest part of the borough. Um, you'll see the site outlined in red there um, for members of the committee, assuming you can see my presentation, but obviously viewers watching at home will not be able to see this. Um, you'll see just to the north of the site that there's a red line uh, that cuts through the centre of the image you can see. That indicates the borough boundary. The application site is immediately adjacent to the borough boundary of the London Borough of Ealing and also further to the west with the London Borough of Hillingdon. Uh, this just shows the site in a bit more context and um, it's up next to Western International Market and the Costco up on Hayes Road for those of you who are familiar with the area. Um, it used to be Toys R Us um, which closed down um, when the company went bust uh, a few years ago. Um, it's situated next to an industrial estate and in a largely commercial and industrial part of the borough. Um, this is just showing the site plan there. So. Um, showing the car park. So the application that you're considering is the change of use from an A1 non-food retail unit to an A1 including food, so an open retail use um, and subdivision of the existing unit to form two retail units plus car park reconfiguration, external alterations and associated works. So the reason that this requires planning permission is because when uh, the original Toys R Us was built, there was two conditions that were applied to that application, which was approved in 1994. And um, this was that the building could not be used for any food retail sales and another condition that there should be no subdivision of the unit um, into more than one unit. So that's why this application is before us this evening. So in terms of the key considerations, in terms of principle, um, this application is located in an out of town centre location, which means by planning policy terms, we have to undertake what is called a sequential and an impact assessment. Now, this makes sure that the development would not have any unacceptable impacts on any of the town or retail centres uh, within its catchment, and also that it's identified that there are no suitable in centre or edge of centre sites that could accommodate the application. So an extensive retail impact assessment and sequential tests have been undertaken. And as you'll see in the report, it's considered quite a lot of retail centres, both within Hounslow and also in Ealing and Hillingdon boroughs, given its location close to the borough boundaries. Um, officers have assessed that and are satisfied that the test is passed in regard to the sequential test and that there are no suitable sites within any of the centres and also in terms of the impact test which means that we are satisfied the development would not have an unacceptable impact on the vitality or viability of those centres as required by planning policy. Um, oh I'm not quite sure what's happened there sorry my screen's just completely disappeared. <laughs> Robert you appear to be sharing your screen sorry.
there we are you're back sorry you're i'm back. back now thank you i do apologize for that um, yeah, so in terms of the, we are satisfied that the sequential and the impact assessment tests insofar as to the town centre and edge of centre impacts. So therefore we consider that development would be acceptable in this regard in principle. In addition, there will be economic benefits from bringing back into use an existing brownfield and vacant site. Um, obviously in terms of jobs and economic benefits arising from that. In terms of other key considerations, we're satisfied that in regards to character and appearance, the improvements to the building would improve the appearance of it compared to existing um, and refurbish that and make it look more contemporary. Um, in terms of parking and servicing and transport impacts, so um, TFL are the highway authority um, for some of the major roads in that area, such as the Parkway and also Hayes Road. So we've been in extensive discussions with them and they've advised that they would be satisfied with the transport impacts of the scheme and provided that there are two contributions secured. One is towards Bullsbridge roundabouts, which is to undertake some improvement works there. And secondly, a further contribution, which has just been confirmed uh, today prior to the committee, um, that would be for contribution towards the improvement of traffic lights on Hayes Road and in the vicinity of the site, just to make sure that there's no unacceptable impacts. So subject to securing those two planning obligations, plus a travel plan and also conditions regarding the car park and EV charging, we're satisfied that the development would be acceptable in terms of transport um, and traffic impact. Overall, um, it's considered that the development would accord with the development plan and it is therefore recommended for approval subject to the conditions contained in the original report and the addendum report and the late report published today and the planning obligations via section 106. Thank you very much. OK, Sam, thank you very much. Um, now, moving to questions to Sam, Councillor Richard Foote, questions? <laughs> no, I don't really have any questions. I, I, I note that you know, the fact that it's on all of the borders of those boundaries probably added 20 pages to the report. <laughs> Most <laughs> definitely. <laughs> OK, all right. Uh, Councillor Mel Collins, any questions to um, Sam? Yeah, I've, I've got I've got three, if I may, Chair. Um, so the, the first and important one, can you tell me um, how um, this development is going to be designed out by uh, designing out crime? particularly in lighting and in any other um, ancillary uh, whatever to, uh, to to make sure that it's it's uh, safe I, I i believe there may be other uh, there may be other uh, uh, buildings in that area but this as this is going to be a double store um, i'm just concerned about how the how crime has been designed out here the second question uh, is my usual one about soft and hard landscaping. Does this development lend itself uh, to give just a bit of colour and cheer to the area to make people look, feel a bit happier? And the third question is, uh, uh, is the one about solar panels. Does, does this building lend itself to solar panels? Okay, Sam. Hey, thank you, Councillor Collins. So in terms of the lighting, um, so and secured by design. We haven't received any comments from the police on this particular application and there are lights proposed in the car park obviously for both you know the safety of users of the store in terms of you know pedestrians and also vehicles and um, what I have got on this and this will probably answer your second question as well is that there is a condition number 11 which is regarding the landscaping which requires like prior to the occupation of the development we have details of both hard and soft landscaping works to be submitted and that they are implemented and um, what we can specifically add is that this includes details of lighting as well. So then I can have the final say over that to make sure that there would be good illumination all around the store, because I do understand your concerns about that. But I'm satisfied we can take um, that from um, the condition side, if that would be agreeable to yourself. Uh, uh, Chair, could I actually move that if, it, if it moving is necessary? So, sorry, uh, uh, what was that point? Uh, uh, I asked the question, uh, about designing out crime, particularly uh, uh, safe and adequate lighting in the area. And uh, Sam said we could add that as, uh, as a bolster to the soft and hard landscaping um, uh, condition. And yeah, I'm, yeah, that, 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 that's fine. I, I, I'm I think... formally asking to, to, to move that, if I may. Um, can I ask, before you actually ask uh, Sam to move it, can I ask Sam that in our negotiations, whatever the committee decides, can that be a discussion for then or do you need to specifically make it a condition? 
Um, what I was proposing to do is that I could include it in an existing landscaping condition and just specifically because that condition runs through quite a lot of different things such as like, um, you know, fencing and the pavements and bits like that. So it seems like an appropriate condition to include that in rather than adding a, another condition specifically for lighting. Obviously, I'm happy to take the lead from what members would prefer, but I'm satisfied that what Councillor Collins concerns are can be dealt with through the landscaping condition by specific reference. Actually, I've just realised it specific. Sorry, I've just read the condition again. It does say lighting in there. So condition 11 includes details of lighting. So it's all covered in there already, actually, Councillor Thank Collins you. and Chair. So I don't think I, we need I to apologize. add anything further. No, no, no that's that, my that, fault. That, that, OK, th th that's fine, because yeah. otherwise we would right. take a separate vote on, on, on adding that condition. OK, that's good. So Councillor Collins, that, that's already covered, I think. Yeah, Yeah. So, so just a question now on the solar panels, please. OK, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the, I haven't got a confirmation of the building can or cannot lend itself to solar panels. There's none proposed and the improvements that are being met are mainly through the um, improvement of the building fabric to bring it up to date with current standards. And that would exceed the building regulations, plus also and um, there would be a, a carbon offset contribution to be made. So it, there's no um, solar panels expressly proposed on this development, but we are satisfied that it does obviously comply with the intent of the policy with the improvements and also the contribution to the carbon offset fund. Right, OK, okay I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, thank you. OK, I mean, we, we, we could always when we enter into discussion with them, we can always ex explore the possibility of, of uh, uh, PVAs on there. Yeah. Sam? Um, I mean, it is, if you would like us to do that, we can look into that. We can um, probably formulate a condition with regards to the PV panels. Um, if that's that, fine. That would, be, that would be absolutely fine. Yeah, okay. okay. So no let, let, we'll let, 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 let's do that. Yeah, okay. That's good. I think make Councillor uh, Collins and I think my colleague, uh, Councillor Richard Foote, also very happy because they're both into the actual greening of areas. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. I'm looking here at the Grand Union Canal to see if we can replace cars with boats. <laughs> okay, difficult game to <laughs> how's the heist then? <laughs> okay, let's uh, let, let, let's move on to Councillor Bishnu Groong. Bishnu, questions to Sam. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, Sam, I would like to ask you. One is the uh, the parking. If you go to the um, page eighty six. 8.119. Um, you have mentioned that the 98 car parking spaces, including seven blue badges, and then you said that is reducing 34 spaces. So um, can you please break down and tell us that uh, how many blue, blue badge parking spaces available and then how many the other parking space available, please? Of course, Councillor. So sorry, that's probably my my drafting of the report there. So what's happened is the car park has been reduced by 34 spaces against the current layout. And um, it was decided, obviously, in terms of improving it to modern safety standards. And also, you know, when you've got a supermarket, you've got like the trolley bays and all the extra bits. So what that's done, it's reduced the parking spaces. And obviously, as a council, that's something we support, too, because there's air quality and sustainable travel impacts that arise from reducing that. So that is acceptable. So there would be 98 parking spaces in total, of which there'll be seven blue badge and seven parent and child spaces. And that's a reduction of 34 spaces against the current layout of the car park. OK, um, thank you. And other the I'm concerned about the uh, safety for the vehicle access because this road is a um, very heavy traffic flowing uh, on this area and the both side of the uh, uh, building is the international uh, market as well. So yeah. uh, have you any concern about the uh, uh, entry and outgoing of the vehicle safety in that area, please? So what happens as part of this sort of assessment is that we have a road safety audit undertaken, which assesses the condition of the road in terms of its uh, safety and efficiency of its operation. And what that's recommended is that some road markings need to be repainted to make sure the road's as safe as possible. The applicants agreed to do that and we secure that as part of the Section 106 agreement. Lovely. Thank you, Leo. That's all. Sorry, Sam. Yeah, that's all. Uh, oh, my no problem at all. Thank you very oh, much, Councillor. Chair, I'm finished.
Where is Jeff gone? Chair. Yeah, we lost the chair. Let me just check participants. Yes, indeed, the chair has left the building. Oh. Okay, can we just give it a um, couple of minutes to see if you can reconnect? It does sometimes happen. <clears throat> you may need to recap when the chair comes back, so. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. We can cover that. But I can sneakily tell you that Brentford won one nil, but finished the game with ten men. <laughs> That's good. Um, I, I, I think actually, when uh, Amrit disappeared, we actually uh, we really haven't said anything after that. So I don't think there's much to recap. If anything, we'll just check if he missed anything. It's not. It'll probably be Councillor Gurung's comments, which we think we can briefly cover anyway yep. when he comes back. If it was anything more, I might have forgot about it by now, but. Uh... There's Mark missed a bit of Mel's uh, Brentford update. <laughs> yeah, you better not mean it, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the live recording, Mel. <laughs> Is it take, possible to take the presentation down so that we can yeah, just see who's, uh, who's actually present? That's better, thank you. No, put, put, put the presentation back up again. Uh, I, I do remember the Toys R Us size. a bit late in the day for this. I, I do remember the Toys R Us size. It was up there when I was, when I was very young, but my, my parents never took me there. Tragically, tragically. Oh. <laughs> I used to go there to buy the, uh, uh, you know, the toys for my, uh, my children and my grandchildren. Yes. It's lovely, but it's unfortunate that it's closed. Now it's coming up with something different, which is good. I used to, I used to take my kids to Toys R Us in, um, oh, well, it wasn't Guildford, it was somewhere out that way. Oh. Uh, I think so, we're in so right, can you try and call Councillor Mann just to see if he's trying to connect? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll Is that all right? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Mel was expecting to finish within two hours, but uh, uh, well, it's all right. It did not happen. Well, <coughs> it's clock tomorrow. <laughs> this looks late. Doing the night shift. <laughs> no, I've got hardly shift to tomorrow, <laughs> Richard. Uh. But not not too early. That's around. Uh, Six o'clock, not too bad. Bus stop here, haven't you, at Ballsbridge? Ballsbridge, yeah, that's the uh, the bus stop right in front of the uh, toy, uh, uh, yeah, toy URS. Yeah, because it, is it a bus that comes all the way from Brentford and all the way through? That is the main junction. It comes to, the bus comes from the South Hall as well, and Hayes and Brent, uh, Brentford. Mm -hmm. It's a junction. Blimey. Doesn't the H5 go there as well? Yeah. Well, that's the, what's the one I'm talking about that goes round and then turns up um, oh, where we've been talking about earlier today? Johnny, maybe you are talking about 105. 105 also going you know, to travel that route. No, um, I think it's an H bus, I think. H28 yeah. is. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I said H5. It's H32 or something like that, isn't it? Uh, no, it's H32 caught off a little bit uh, before coming that junction. Yeah, it comes through Hounslow, then it comes down the Hamworth Road, and it turns up the. Um, oh, that one is the one one one. Are you talking about? No, I'm not talking about the one one one. That's going. Is someone trying to join the meeting? Sorry, I can hear someone else. No, it comes down to what? What? What was the name of that pub on the corner? It's the Tesco's now. But um, and then it, it turns up. Um, and, and the North Star. Star. Um, Captain Mann's just joined the meeting. He joined the meeting. Right. Let's see, where are you? Hello, how are you doing? He's golden. I'm waiting for you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm just trying to get back in to the system. Oh, uh, but we, we haven't seen you. Yeah. OK, no, you, you can't, can't see, see you. Yeah, you can't see me because I'm on the phone. Uh. 
Right. Are we okay to continue, or Chair? Do you want to wait until you're back in on the actual uh, system? I'm I'm tr I'm trying to come back in. Right. So uh, just give me a few minutes. What a technology here. Yeah, this is always a, a problem with uh, with technology three. Right. For some reason, it, it just won't let me log in back into into the system. So um, I'm going to have to reboot this. It's going to take a, a few minutes, possibly about four or four or five minutes. Yeah. Wow. Um, any chance you guys can wait, or uh, or I can let Richard take over and let Richard. Well, I, no, I think it's because we 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 haven't completed the ball bridge item, have we? That's so, right. So and, and I think you dropped out good. without us missing anything. So or you missing anything. So. I would say reboot. Let's go for that now. OK, all right. I'm, I'm just rebooting the complete system. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know where, where, where the problem lies, whether it lies with the uh, Internet provider or whether it's with, with, with my system. Can you just shut down your Teams and then, re and, just, and then restart it, but not your laptop and just come back in again? It could be a Teams issue, which we're all currently experiencing. When you say you're going to switch teams off, you're not going to switch all of us off, are you? <laughs> <laughs> that would be risky. Apparently throughout this, some people have been having the pleasure of seeing me alone. <laughs> <laughs> what I was trying to do there, Sam, was I was wondering if, if if the camera was on me, if I if I then shared my screen, if I would be able to relay your um oh, uh, fair enough. your no, screen share, but it, it didn't it didn't have to side effects. No. <laughs> Oh, we got, we got. You know what's going to happen, don't you? Hammerick's going to come in and all the rest of us will drop out. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be, be funny. Come on, Richard. Don't, 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 don't wish that picture And we'll just disappear into the sunset. <laughs> yes, please don't tempt me at counselling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Sam, just in case there are any questions, do you want to send me your presentation? Because it looks like yeah, I absolutely. share the screen with the outside world. Ah, uh, yes. It seems like if you if you leave, if you're watching it and you leave, you can't get back in because we've lost two uh, two colleagues who were watching uh, left and then can't rejoin. Ah, uh, that wind is getting up yeah. out there. It's really blowing hard now. Hi, hi guys. Uh, right, okay. Uh, I can't get back in because it keeps giving me a uh, login fail, right? So um, I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to just carry on on the phone and I'll try as much as I can to keep getting, try and get back in, right? But otherwise we'll just be on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Amrit, yeah. Okay, so um, where we were, 
Uh, I didn't have any further questions to Sam on on, on the the uh, the the site, the Bullsbridge site. So uh, let, let, let's let's move to the debate and discussion. Councillor Richard Foote for debate or discussion. Yeah. Yeah, I've got very little to um, debate on this. I think it's you know a good position, a good site. Um, it adds some benefits there with terms of you know having a large empty building like that and, and no employment is especially with the current situation um yeah it'd be good uh, I, I'm, I'm all for it yeah i'm all for it <coughs> okay right councillor mel collins mel are you still on there oh, i am indeed yeah and i have no further comments mm. okay that's fine councillor bishnu grung any comments any debate um thanks chair um yes i don't have that uh, much uh, comment only i would like to say that thank you very much for the officer sam who bring up the um, brilliant uh, the uh, briefing note on here so uh, that's all thank you okay councillor michael dennis Thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I agree with Councillor Foote. I, I think it's a very good use of site and the space there. And also the, the employment benefits as well will be felt really in, in across Hamsley. So, yes, uh, thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, no further questions. OK, uh, and for myself, um, I, I think this brings back into use uh, a site really was it called um, that uh, is in the middle of a commercial area and and something along the what is being proposed i think it would suit it down to the ground um the the, the one thing I, I want sam to note is that when we do the the um the road road uh, section reworks depending on whether the committee is minded to approve or refuse um we we want to consider the traffic lights which are adjacent to the western international market from the costco lights there are two lanes that uh, within the space of about 10 yards become one lane and mm. that's a bone of contention for traffic and traffic problems because it leads to a problem when you when you're taking a right into the tesco's and the petrol pump site which then feeds off into this uh, this site that's in question so so something uh, some sort of improvement on that would be would be great I, 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 I'm minded to, to, to support this. OK, so. I am looking for a, a proposal. Can anybody move any proposal? Yeah. Yes, the, yeah. the officer's recommendation. <laughs> OK, Mel, I, I, I heard you first, so you're moving it. Can I have a seconder? Uh, I'll second that. OK, Councillor Dennis. So it's been moved that the officer's recommendation be accepted and it's been seconded by Councillor Michael Dennis. Let's move on to a vote. Councillor Richard Foote. Yes, Chair. Yeah, um, I'm, this is Councillor Richard Foote. I've been here for the whole of the debate uh, without uh, <laughs> separation. Um, I've heard everything that's been said, read all of the report, and I vote in favour of the motion. Thank you, Richard. Councillor Mel Collins. Uh, Councillor Mel Collins, Brentford Ward. Um, I have been present throughout the whole of the debate. I've heard the arguments and I'm happy to uh, move and uh, approve uh, the officer's recommendation. OK, thank you. Councillor Bishnu Grung. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm Council Vishnu Grung from Hanos Park uh, Ward and I'm the member of the uh, planning committee. I have been here whole of the meeting and I heard all the debate and I am uh, voting for the uh, proposal of the recommendation. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councilor Grung. Councilor Michael Dennis. Uh, good evening, yes. Councillor Michael Dennis here, a councillor for um, Chiswick Riverside, and have a seat on this committee. I've been, a, I've been, I've heard the whole debate, and have been pres present for the whole time, and I vote in favour of the officer's recommendation. Okay, thank you, Councillor uh, Michael Dennis, uh, and for myself, Councillor Hamrick Mann. I've been present for the whole of the debate. I've heard all the evidence, and I vote in favour of the officer's recommendation for approval. 
Okay, colleagues, that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much for that. Um, let's move on. And it's the last uh, item, which is uh, on your addendum, which is item six, Rugby Road, Isleworth. And uh, this is Jesse to, to present the report. It is, thank you, Chair. I believe the technical issues might have resolved, so I will share my screen. Is that coming through? Yep. Excellent. Uh, Perfect. So my name is Jesse Rotran. I am a senior planning officer, and this is the application at 30 Rugby Road. So the site is on the eastern side of Rugby Road. Just bring up the location plan. So to the west of the site is the boundary with the London Borough of Richmond. And also on the western side of the site, we have uh, Witten Brook. Further to the west is Twickenham Rugby Stadium. And then to the south and southeast is Twickenham Trading Estate, where we have commercial uses, uh, many of which are industrial. To the north and east are residential properties ranging from two to four stories just off of Varsity Drive. So the site itself is occupied by a two-story building, which is in office use and also provides self-storage space. And I will just quickly run through some street view images. So this is a view along Rugby Road and a similar view, but from within the site. Moving on, we have uh, a view towards the residential properties along Varsity Drive, as well as part of the application site. Another uh, view from Rugby Road. And lastly, we have two views from uh, Varsity Drive through towards the application site. And then here you can see the existing site plan and the existing elevations. So the proposal is for the comprehensive redevelopment of the site and would provide a mix of office and self storage space and 146 residential flats within six blocks arranged around a communal courtyard. So the box would range from three to six stories in height and would include two basement levels. Vehicular access would be retained in the current location and an additional vehicular access would be formed at the southwestern side of the site. The proposal would also include the formation of a pedestrian footbridge over Witten Brook and would also uh, would involve associated landscaping and parking. I will just very quickly show you those elevations. So at the top of the screen, you'll see the street elevation along Rugby Road and then to the additional elevations. And lastly, I just have two uh, rendered images, uh, one showing the communal courtyard. And secondly, we have an image along Rugby Road of that front elevation. So the applica uh, applicant has submitted an appeal against non-determination and it will therefore be determined at a public inquiry. So today we're seeking authority to defend the appeal and negotiate the associated legal agreements. So the officer report outlines what the reasons for refusal would have been um, had we determined the application and I'll just run you through those now. So while the proposal does not include any affordable housing provision, the submitted viability details have been thoroughly reviewed by an independent party who's confirmed that the proposal, proposal could not viably support any affordable housing. And we therefore can't object on these grounds. However, the proposal does fail to provide an acceptable mix of housing sizes, given the under provision of three and four bed units, and would therefore fail to meet identified local housing need. In addition, given the site layout, the rear amenity space would lack activation at ground level and natural surveillance and would fail to provide a safe and attractive environment for future residents. Additionally, it's considered that the proposed development would fail to provide future occupants with an acceptable standard of accommodation, and that's given the quality of amenity space on site, as well as overlooking between habitable rooms the under provision of play space and poor internal daylight and sunlight levels. Now regarding noise, 
the submission fails to demonstrate that appropriate design measures have been incorporated to ensure that the development would mitigate against the impacts from noise generating uses in the area to ensure no adverse impact on future occupants and by extension would fail to safeguard the existing and future neighboring industrial uses. There would also be two technical reasons for refusal that may fall away throughout the course of the appeal regarding sustainability and ecology. While the scheme would deliver public benefits, as is outlined in the officer report, it is not considered that the benefits would outweigh the harm and conflict with the development plan. And uh, that summarizes our case. Um, so I'll leave it there and would be happy to answer any questions you might have now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jesse. Um, right, Councillor Richard Foot. Any Ch questions to Jesse? Chair, be before the questions start, I think it's probably just worth reiterating to the members of the committee that all they are deciding here is if the council had been able to make a decision, whether or not it would have supported the officer's recommendation. Your ability yeah, so to vary. It, yes, thank you, Robert. It's it's to defend the appeal and to negotiate the legal agreement. So those were the reasons for refusal that we would have refused the application on if we had refused the application. So you are neither approving nor refusing this application, but you're just expressing your views as to what the decision might have been if, if the law had allowed you to make this decision. Okay. Thank you. Right. That's so, actually um, answered my question, <laughs> Chair. So yeah, I'm OK at the moment. So we'll wait till we get around to the next stage. OK, so, so, so no questions at the moment to Jesse, yes? Richard? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, sorry, I've muted. Uh, yeah, no, no, no questions at the moment. OK, right. Councillor Mel Collins, any no, questions? No, to Jesse? No, nothing for me, Chair, because I don't understand what you're, what you're discussing, so I'm in a slightly difficult position. OK, no, 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 no that, that, that's fine. Uh, Robert and Jesse, between you two, yes. right, can you explain again? Because yes, obviously, absolutely. I don't, members, I don't want members to be voting on something that they don't understand. Yes. So if, if, if you can just re-explain... Um, re Right. Yes, what, absolutely. What is that actually doing? Yeah, thank you. So, so Councillor, as uh, we just stated, the application is not before you today for determination. Rather, because it's going to be going to an appeal and going to be subject to a public inquiry, all that is before you today is for officers to get authority to defend the uh, defend the appeal based on those reasons for refusal I just outlined and just authority to negotiate the legal agreements. Well, to clarify yeah, further. I'm, I'm happy to read. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah to right. clarify so further, Robert, we, we received a planning application and uh, we were negotiating. The negotiations went beyond the statutory period within which we should make a decision if we can. And instead of waiting for us to come to an agreement because we were negotiating, the applicants decided that they wished instead to appeal against the council's failure to make a decision, which is a deemed refusal if they choose to go down that route. So that's why we, we okay. are with, and we're, we're now just requesting your views based on the office, officer recommendation. Yeah, I'm very grateful, thank yes, you. Yes, thank you, Robert. Okay, that, that, that's good. So, so, so now we have clarity that at this moment in time, we're not determining the application. We're just actually giving the officers authority to go and deal with this or on the basis of what they would have done had we determined that application. Is that it, right? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, so, Chair. Right. So, Councillor Bishnu Grung, right? Uh, any questions to Jesse or Robert, indeed? Bishnu? Uh, hang on, Chair. Um, thank you, Chair. I have no question at all. So um, that's it. Thank okay. you. Okay, good. Councillor Michael Dennis. Oh, thank you, Chair. No, no further questions from me. Okay, and from myself, no further questions because this is quite straightforward. Okay, so let's move on to discussion and debate. Any discussion, Councillor Richard Foote? No, no real discussion, Chair. I, I, I prepared to move that we uh, support the officer's stance on this. OK, I'll come back to you after I've gone through. Everybody. OK, yep, uh, fine. Councillor Mel Collins. 
No, I've got nothing to add, Chair, except that I would second Richard's proposal. Okay, that's fine. Let me come back to you again. Uh, Councillor Vishnu Gurung. What am I? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair. I have no further question, and then I'm agree to uh, uh, the officer recommendation. Okay. Uh, we, we'll come back to you again because that will be on the voting side. Uh, Councillor Michael Dennis. Thank you, Chair. No, I, I think the officer's position here is entirely sensible, and I, I would vote in favour of the officer's recommendation. Okay. Very good. Uh, Councillor Amit Man, I, I'm. I have no further questions, so really, or, or any discussion. Um, let, let me move to the proposal. Um, I've had Councillor Richard Foote move a proposal. Richard, yeah, you move the officer's recommendation? Yes, Chair, I remove we support the officer's recommendation. OK, and I've got a seconder, Mel Collins. Is that uh, correct, yeah, Mel? Yeah, form formally second the officer's recommendation, Chair. OK, that's fine. So we've got a formally uh, uh, live... Um, uh, motion and that's been duly seconded. So let me go to the vote. Councillor Richard Foote, using the prescriptive words. Using the descriptive words, yeah. Uh, I'm Councillor Richard Foote. I represent Hamworth Ward. I'm a member of the planning committee and vice chair of the planning committee. I have been present for all of the debate. I've heard all of the arguments and I am voting in favour. OK, thank you. Councillor Mel Collins. Councillor Mel Collins, Brentford Board Member of the Planning Committee. I've heard the arguments and listened to the debate and I formally moved, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't. I formally seconded the officer's recommendation, Chair. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bishnu Grung. What am I? Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I am Councillor Bishnu Grung, representing Honor Park Ward. I have been here, uh, I have been present the whole of the meeting and heard all the debate and I'm voting for the proposal recommendation. Thank you. OK, thank you. Councillor Michael Dennis. Hello, Richard. I've been. Uh, my name is Councillor Michael Dennis. I'm Councillor for Chiswick Riverside Ward. I'm a member of this committee. I have been present for the whole debate and have heard all the arguments and I vote in favour of the officer's recommendation. OK, that's fine. OK, uh, I'm Councillor Amrit Mann. I've been here for the duration of the discussion and debate. I've heard all the evidence and I also uh, move in, um, in approval of the officer recommendation to give them authority to, to deal um, with, with this application. Um, OK, so colleagues, that is unanimously approved. So the officers have that, recommend, uh, uh, that recommendation for going ahead and dealing with this. OK, so now. Jesse, thank you for, for that. Um, and thank you, Chair. Robert. Yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to the rest of the uh, uh, agenda. Uh, item seven, which was the addendum report that's been given and some of them be taken up within the body of the items that we've gone through. So moving on to item eight, any other business which the chair considers urgent? I've not had uh, any urgent business. Uh, the next date of the meeting is on February the 11th. And really, again, this is likely to be another virtual meeting. Um, can I thank uh, everybody this evening, especially my committee members and my officers. And and I also uh, commiserate with our ICT people because of the, some of the difficulties that we've yeah. had. But then this is the this is the 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 problems that we have with virtual meetings. Sometimes you are uh, unexpectedly off air, and we apologise to all the viewers for that. Um, unfortunately, we've not been able to make amends on all fronts, but uh, we will endeavour to make sure that in the next meeting we are without gremlins. So, um, I would I would like to thank everybody for being present tonight and also those viewing, um, and also to keep safe 
given that the times that we find ourselves in, you know, please, please do do listen to the government's advice, do listen to the local government's advice and, and stay safe and keep your loved ones safe. So until next time, uh, let me close this meeting. And again, a big thank you. It was a very difficult meeting, but we, we managed to get through to the end. So yep. thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank yeah, you. Thanks to yourself, Chair. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, boys.